Oh my God, the Audio Quitter Podcast finally on after a four day hiatus. Look, I was filming the HBO show with Apatow, which uh, went great. I got two episodes done, two full episodes of an HBO series, which I got offered another episode. I'm basically, they picked it up for eight, which in HBO terms a full season, and I'm, I'm pretty much in every show. Very good. Congratulations, Audie. <laughs> that undeniable voice you hear. Just jumping in without his intro, of course. Fresh from a Fuck Brook- the intro. <laughs> well, clearly. Clearly that's your, you know, game plan. But uh, fresh, by the way, from a engagement party in Bensonhurst wearing a four dollar suit. No, what is no that? I mean, what dead suit. body just steal that off of? <laughs> that is a bo- it, uh, Mario it was, Bosco. It the- was Dan's communion suit. Yeah. Oh, coming out swagging. <laughs> the uh, coming out the Hagler Hearns mm. game plan. The coming out with right hands blaring, <laughs> right at Dan Falato, uh, disco Dan Falato. Disco demolition, Dan Falato. Why are you all over Dan right away? You feel Dan's an easy target with the windbreaker in the hat? Because I, I didn't have a usual food here ready for. Yeah. By his, the way, Mario, it's un, I noticed that too. Yeah. Uh, poor Dan gets fucking just shit on. It's by not everybody. that he gets shit on. No, Dan, no, Mario walks in here with the four dollar suit from the engagement party, and uh, he walks around like Jimmy Cagney. He's got the fucking <laughs> twitch going. Hey, Dan, get me a water. What the fuck? It's freezing in here. Turn the air down. <laughs> Give me two of those naked lady tees, wanna, five of these, I three of those. I them to put the heat on soon. You walked around like Rodney Dangerfield and uh, walking in the <laughs> gift shop in Caddyshack. Hey, Dan, this place is restricted, so don't tell him you're Jewish. Okay, fine. Can I ask Dan a question? Can you ask Dan a question? Go right ahead. Dan, was that had a gift? Oh, <laughs> is that the whole joke? No, because it's not a joke. The man's a Cub fan. Why would you bring the, the Yankees no, hat? No, it's a Yankee Cubs hat. They played each other. Look at the whole hat. Oh, I need to see the Cub part. Oh, you're such a jerk off. <laughs> now, are you, is your game plan to bring the show to a screech? Why don't we introduce the, our Well, friend because here. it's my show and is I'll it do it at my pace. Ben from Cleveland, of course, is here. Cleveland? Clifton. <laughs> ben from Clifton. Uh, easy mistake. Ben uh, is a regular on the show too. He's been Thank around you, a while. Artie. And uh, how how you doing, Ben? Doing well. Already just got married. Pretty fired up. You just got ma- pretty fired. Up. <laughs> you just got married. Well, I now did, is this yeah. a uh, now is this a, uh, right. a high school sweetheart? Who was this girl? I don't know much about. Her. We met on a plane on the way to Vegas. Well, that's great. I mean, I hope she wasn't going. To, I hope she was going to work. No, that's that's a real story. <laughs> I know it's a real story. You know, well, yeah. what, what does she do? What was she doing in Vegas? Uh, uh, she was going out for a party of her own. I was going out for a bachelor party. <laughs> oh, Jesus! Yeah, that's how I do it, Artie. Uh, it, hopefully, she wasn't working the bachelor party. Is my point. Well, I hope not. Not in the beginning, <laughs> Mario. Please, I'm going. It'll be a honeymoon Vegas. You know that movie. <laughs> Terrible. Mario with Mario with an excellent analogy of the. Of the wedding. No collar on the shirt today, Mary. You're going to make fun of Dan with uh, that cheap shirt. You couldn't afford a this collar. This ain't no cheap shirt, brother. Come what on. Did, you, did you change? Uh, well, Brent, cost, I didn't change. He, ben Dan brings called, up a good point. It costs three gumballs. <laughs> ben brings up a good point, by the way. If I pull them out of your wrist, there'll be three gumballs. <laughs> I hope you changed your shirt from the uh, engagement. No, part. this is because it. Because I hope you showed enough respect to the people to wear something different than that. This is the new style of dressing for a Friday night party. Yeah, if you're in the movie The Wand, it's not, it's not a wedding, it's an engagement. Where's the monkey in the grinder box? Oh, Ben from Clifton coming out. You. All right, so uh, so you meet her in, in Vegas, and yes. what happens? You're on the plane, and uh, you're both obviously emanating from Newark, I assume, the flight. That's it, EWR. That's and, then right. you, uh, and then what happens? How do, how do you... Uh, just one thing led to another after a couple of years. She right. was dating somebody, I was, was dating she, somebody. So it went so well on the plane, you got her number? It was, uh, you know. That's how I do it. I don't miss her. I'm not here to waste your time, Artie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, we, you know how it is. Right, I'm right. talking to the king, besides Avello. I'm talking to the king of Vegas. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, the king. Avello's made money off Vegas. I'm, I'm down about 800 Gs. <laughs> I followed your uh, I followed your lead that I learned from the old Stern Show days when way, you would go out there. The reference Ben just made from the old Stern Show, I- I'm not here to waste your time. That that might have been my favorite thing a guest <laughs> said for a while. Steve-O, it was the first time Steve-O from Jackie S came into a... Uh, came into do Stern and people do waste Howard's time. They say bullshit stuff about projects and uh, uh, Steve-O comes in 
with this cute broad. This is like 2001. Jackass was just getting ramped up. And uh, he was partaking in everything at the time. He, he was on The drug he was on was everything mm. this morning. And he goes, Howard says, what are you going to do? He goes, I'm going to staple my nutsack to my inner thigh. Oh. That's what Steve-O says. Okay. And Howard goes, Howard goes, really? And, and Steve-O goes, Howard, I'm not here to waste your time. <laughs> <laughs> And that is, yeah, so many people waste our fucking time with your dumb movie of the week, Vanna White. Yeah, this guy's stapling his nuts to his thigh. He's getting right on it. He ain't fooling around. He ain't. That's the point of the story. <laughs> uh, so uh, so it's a monster crew here to come back. I, so I was, you know, uh, Monday we had the Big Stuttering John show, the whole of radio community recovering from that. <laughs> I, again, I, John wanted us to cut out. Basically, he goes, oh, he tried to cut out where I sound like a scumbag, which would have been every, <laughs> every piece everything of he said. I, I, honestly, we couldn't cut around it. Now, if we cut out the parts, again, John has a thing uh, where if if, so, if you get into a uh, like sort of a, 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 a fucking with each other contest, you know, like busting each other's balls, whatever you want to call it, and, and you're winning. You know, you're getting laughs and he's not. John gets very, very defensive and he gets hostile and he gets evil. And he will, he's like a cornered rat. And then he'll spew out the most vile stuff you've ever heard. He was kind of famous for doing that on Howard. And the thing with Howard, on the Howard show, John could, could make, it could seem like John was winning in a wit contest with somebody because John knew how to play Howard. Howard, if Howard was mad, at something. I'll give you an example. The first time I did Conan, I was a regular on the Conan O'Brien show well before I got on the Howard Stern show, and I was proud of the Conan appearances. I worked hard on them, and uh, you know, Conan had me on every couple of months as like the second guest, and for a comic in his late 20s at that time, that was a big deal. And the first time I did it after the Stern show, I, uh, I mentioned that I had just gotten the Stern show, and that led to Conan uh, talking about Howard. And he was being complimentary, but I guess Howard got mad at something <laughs> Conan was saying. And, uh, you know, when you did an appearance on the Stern Show, you know, pre-Howard, it was easy. Post-Howard, there was added pressure of, you know, first you got to get laughs with the crowd in the, in the audience and the TV crowd has to like you. And now there was the Howard review. And that's the only thing that made, you know, any sense at all in your life because that was the biggest thing. So you had to make sure Howard liked it. So I wasn't really fully initiated in that. So John and Howard were out the night, the Friday night it aired, and Howard got mad at something Conan said. And even though I was getting laughs, that's all Howard fixated on. He was pissed at me. And John knew this information. So uh, 6.02 in the morning, Howard takes a call, and he lets a call through that goes, oh, he sucked on Conan. I'm like, okay. He's hostile, because I knew it was a passive-aggressive thing. Howard did a thing where he didn't say it, he let the caller say it. And then John walks in. So John, at that point, to make Howard laugh doesn't have to be funny. He just has to agree with Howard. He's like, oh, this looks good. And like goofing on stuff I did. <laughs> and, and Howard's laughing at it because he hates me at this point. And now at that point, you know, you, there's no one, everyone has said this, Jackie, uh, you can't win. In that room when you're getting, you have to just take it. That's the move. Don't fight back, just take it. So I just dummied up. But uh, within that conversation, I, I wasn't aggravated at the John stuff because, again, in a, on a level playing field, a battle of the wits, I could level him every time. And, and the, in the next four years, that's what I did every time. And he would uh, get evil and say evil shit. Not as bad as the other day, but um, it's just, you know, it, unless he had inside dope about Howard being mad at you, then nobody could win. Within it, Howard, I guess, was so mad that he goes, and yeah, and you know, and you said to Conan that you're here every day. Now that gives me pressure to have you in here every day and I'm not sure what I want to do. Now that got to me because we had a contract. <laughs> yeah, he told me, oh yeah, you're the guy. It was announced in the New York Post. <laughs> he goes, you know, now I'm like going, oh fuck, what did I do? Did he hate this? Did he hate what we said that much? <laughs> do I not have this job now? And John, of course, secretly was delusional and thought he could sit in that chair. He wanted the job. So oh, John's uh, giggling. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, uh, and of course, Howard's not going to do that. He's not going to let up, you know, without a stutter, you know, John's working at a gas station in Massapequa. Uh, <laughs> you need a comedian to sit in that chair. It's four hours of being funny or saying something relevant. 
so uh, so that really got to me, and I kind of dummied up the whole morning. And people were like, "Going, what are you upset about what John said?" I'm like, "No, I'm, I'm worried that I don't have a job now after I changed my whole life. <laughs> I moved back from California." So again, I figured it, Howard was just mad, and he said it out loud. The third hour, you know, he realized that maybe that was it, and he said, "Oh, you know, no, you're my guy, man. You're my guy." So everything. Is that a what the worship? fuck is that? Wow. There's a giant helicopter, right? It's going to go look out the window. Jesus. i tell you what, man. There's something going on. You, you know you know some shit is going down, man. Ta- terror bombed? shit. You know terror shit is going down. You getting bombed? Take it easy. No, 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 no. I'm right. just saying, uh, I'm saying you, you know that. I we'll we'll was... get into that. That, that. that New York is such a target, man. There's probably stuff that they're thwarting right now. That was like, like we're flying. not supposed to have even known about that guy in Florida. Like, like if everybody did their fucking job, yeah, you know, and, and a guy, a guy who the FBI is investigating doesn't get a fucking bazooka, uh, you, you know, that doesn't happen. But, but, but anyway, the point is uh, that that's how John operates. And uh, of course, at the end, well, I had the job. Yeah. <laughs> Thank <laughs> God. Um, but you know, a, a bunch of times after that. John would, on a level playing field, try to take me down, and it was like a beach ball coming <laughs> in. Uh, and and but that kind of thing really pissed me off, man, because he he showed his true colors there, and he would try to put that I'm your friend, and like, no, you're not my friend. He's a scumbag. Uh, well, not that even that. He's like, he's not my friend. You got in life. This is what happens, man. In life, for you young people out there, you go into life, especially you people who are in your safe place at college. <laughs> you know, and, and you millennials getting brought up where, you know, er, no one's winning. Everybody's keeping, uh, you know, the same score in Little League. That's it, ain't what the world is. People want to take you down. They gang up on you, especially in this business. Oh, uh, you you know, the again. competition is crazy. Doctors, lawyers, any job where you're making big money, there's people who want to take you down. And you have to you have to fight it in a way where, you look, you either win or you lose. That's how it is. And the scumbags win sometimes. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, that's, that, that was the situation there. And a lot of powers that be were waiting for me to fuck up because that chair was a very big thing to have. And, uh, and, uh, it went on right up until the end and the heroin finally took me down, but a lot of people, uh, let that happen. And there was a lot of people there who thought they were going to be sitting in the arty chair and it's, uh, <laughs> what is it about? I think six years later and nobody's <laughs> there. A lot of people will say they're my friends too now. Like all of a sudden, uh, uh, they see the writing on the wall that maybe, uh, you know, old Howie's not going to be their best buddy. When that, when they, uh, there's some people that work there. I feel like, going, guys, listen, when, when, when the day that uh, Howard uh, leaves that show, that's the last day you're seeing Howard. <laughs> uh, he's not calling you back. You're not going to Jennifer Aniston's reception. You're not on the private jet. Unless you literally have blackmail pictures like Ralph, you're not hanking out with him. <laughs> so what are you saying? Arthur? Ralph Ralph must have blackmail pictures. <laughs> so are, you're saying when, uh, when you got the chair that, that other people were trying to fight to get, even after you had signed the absolutely. contract? Absolutely. Yeah? Oh, absolutely, sure. And something like that, John, see, someone like John is one of these guys swirling around who sees, okay, Howard, he probably, he was out with Howard, he probably saw Howard really get mad at me. For, uh, what I think what Howard was mad at was he was allowed, I allowed him to be judged by a guy that he doesn't want to be judged by in Conan. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, he don't play that. I mean, there's a re- I mean, Howard is one of those guys, he's, he's a legend and, a, and an icon and uh, as successful as he is because he's the combination of work ethic, great businessman, and huge talent. Like, that's a rare trifecta. He's, he's a genius performer creatively. He said in and a video. He's a self, uh, I'm just going to, talk over he's a self uh, he's a self uh he's a self-promoter like you've never seen before he's a genius self-promoter and he's a genius business guy and uh and he's also ruthless ruthless (laughs) he will steamroll you like a lot of djs in the late 80s found out that fucking guy and uh he almost drove that guy to jump off the roof the guy in philly the zookeeper john (laughs) debella yeah john (laughs) debella just got john debella's not probably not a bad guy he just got in the way of a freight train Hmm. that was not losing (laughs) you know uh uh, Danny in Chicago worked for a guy who was, you know, Danny produced a very big show in Chicago. He was like the Howard of the Midwest. But what took that guy down? You know, 
I don't say for sure that I think he might have had some issues I had. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, and, uh, he did. And, yeah. So whatever. I mean, you know, I think it, but there's a guy, uh, obviously a, 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 a talent on the air, but uh, there's other factors that took him down. Howard has none of those factors that take you down. And uh, Bruce Springsteen's like that. Uh, Jay Z appears to be like that, like you know, to, to, to make a more modern reference. Like there's, there's, you know, Richard Pryor was a genius, but he was a junkie. Uh, there's a lot of guys, quite frankly, who are not as talented as I am, who are way more successful in this business because I'm a junkie. Uh, you know, I don't have all those factors. Howard does, and uh, you know, um, if 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 someone can uh, get on that good side, if they're, if, they're, if someone's not talented. Say like a, like a John. Uh, <laughs> no, whatever. I mean, John's whatever. He's got a certain talent. But there's a lot of people who work there who go, the, 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 they can be very dangerous because their entire existence base, is based on the opinion of one guy. So they're not your friend. As a matter of fact, they're dangerous to have around because they will rat on you. They will find, and that's what life is. They will be ruthless to try to get the job in that chair. So I think John, and that's a good question, uh, Ben, uh, yeah, there were people after I signed that contract. I think John saw how mad he was at me that night and knows the ruthlessness of Howard that maybe he thought it wasn't just something. In other words, when Howard said, I don't know if I could have you in here every day, John probably said, oh, fuck, maybe this is an opportunity. And I could be right. the guy who's Howard's friend now. Like, I'm helping you take him down on the air. Mm -hmm. So I should be in the chair. Right. I'm Cinderella. Look at me, <laughs> Howard. Right. I want my cigarettes, Howard. <laughs> no stretch it. <laughs> It's me, John. I want my cigarette. I want my cigarette. <laughs> it's me, the ratchet. I want my cigarette. My whippets. Yeah, my whippets. <laughs> There's whippets. That, that just sums it up. So, uh, but what happened was, you know, Howard uh, calmed down and then uh, said, no, you have the job. And then Howard became a very good friend to me and obviously a, a guy who gave me an opportunity that, was the best ever. The reason I have any successes is because of what Howard did for me there. But I was a comedian before the show. That's the difference. How you know John was an intern, uh, and uh, I, I, no, I was uh, quite frankly a self-made millionaire just was from just from too? comedy. I'm just going to keep talking. <laughs> just from comedy uh, when I got to the Stern Show, and uh, that's the difference. I knew what I was doing. I had a two hours of stand-up. I was ready to make money because now I had a way to get people in seats. I went from playing. People say, how'd that change your life, that show? I went from the funny bone to Carnegie fucking Hall. <laughs> but you got to have the hour. You got to have the material. And I had it. So uh, that was a big swing and a miss by John. And then, uh, <laughs> you, you know, uh, there was a lot of them in, in the future. And uh, the other night, you know, he, he just walks in here and it's just he just aggravates me. It, you know, immediately he's, he's he's eighteen beers deep. This poor kid, he's got driving him around. <laughs> this this great comedian Tammy Pescatelli, who's got as a sidekick, and he, he's just shitting on life. He claims he's, he needs money, he's broken, but he he's got this opportunity to do a podcast with Adam Carolla, and he's fucking ossified drunk before he does it. And I go, well, okay, it'll be your podcast too. So I let him do the intro. The intro. Like, <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Uh, you know, so uh, so and when you bring that up as a friend, like John, you're an alcoholic. You have to you have to stop doing this. Uh, you, you have to get get it together somehow. If you're gonna uh, get a podcast, you can't shit on the whole thing. And he's like, oh, no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's do what that. he says. Right, exactly. So uh, dynamite so, drop in, Mario. So the other night, uh, the other night, uh, again, I'll keep talking. The <laughs> other night. Uh, he came in here, and so I just I just went at him a little bit. I was like, let, let me let me stick this uh, Cincinnati Zoo gorilla <laughs> and see if I can fall in his enclosure and get him to adjust my shorts. Did you? Uh, well, what happened was, you know, we uh, again like happens a lot. He, John engaged in a a uh, a battle of you know who's funnier. <laughs> And quite frankly, without the Howard thing, I will take him down every time. <laughs> every time, he'll never get up. If we may use the metaphor of a battle of the wits as being a stickball game, if I'm up first, John will never get up. <laughs> I won't make it out. And that's what happened. So uh, the the thing that broke the camel's back, I think, was uh, when I started doing him and the Bruce Jenner thing, because, of course, clearly he's Bruce <laughs> Jenner's friend. And I, I don't know. He was uh, best friends with Larry the Cable Guy. I mean, Jesus Christ. Uh, so yeah, I, I, Jay Leno gave John a job. 
Jake Leno told John he could tell people he was an announcer. Guy's got a speech impediment. Gave him the most coveted uh, voiceover job in the history of television with a speech impediment. You think you'd be loyal to Jay Leno? Then Jay Leno allows John to tell people he's a writer, a writer <laughs> for the Tonight Show. That's a coveted thing to say. You know what an insult that is to writers on the Tonight Show. And and uh, and I say to John, who's funnier, Jay Leno or Larry the Cable Guy? <laughs> <laughs> and he can't be, uh, he, first of all, it, it, you don't have to be loyal to Jay Leno. It's a, re, a retard can answer that question. Mm -hmm. One guy was a failing comedian, and he realized that retards in the Midwest would laugh at him putting on a flannel and a tool belt and telling old jokes with a catchphrase, get her done. We should get Larry in here with them. Again, I'll keep talking. <laughs> So I, uh, so so I, I, I you know, I, again, J Jay Leno's your buddy. Even, even if you don't believe it, it's, uh, J the answer is Jay Leno. When someone asks you who's funny, Jay Leno is a revered comic. Uh, forget the Tonight Show. Jay Leno was a fucking rock star comedian before the Tonight Show. He took a lot of edge off the way yeah. Letterman did when he went to eleven thirty. Leno was known as like the assassin because he would just level hecklers, level yeah. them. No one had a shot. I saw him live well before The Tonight Show, and he was as good as a comedian is. You know, he was in the, 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 the Leno, Richard Lewis, Seinfeld, uh, all those guys, the Kinnison era. He was as good as a guy. And then he got a, a mainstream show, and he became more mainstream, and he took a hit for it. He's not a great interviewer. He's a comic. But uh, a lot of people, you know, thought he wasn't as funny as he really is. But he, he's amazing. Larry the Cable Guy... Look, God bless him. It's America. He made a lot of fucking money. Guy's got a basketball court in his house. That Pepsi, um, was it Pepsi? Once again, I'll try to bounce through <laughs> The commercial he does. Right, exactly. It's for a, 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 a drink called Pepsi. Uh, yeah, they pay a lot of money. They pay a lot of money. So, uh, yeah, What's Prilo second. Prilo everything up your second. ass. Uh, you know, everything. The, the guy's you know, got diarrhea and a barbecue. He's cashing it, is what he's doing. He's cashing Gotta it. Gotta get Prilo second. He's cashing it. And, uh, you know, but, but the answer who's funnier is, come on. Come on. A, a, a retarded little leaguer, says Jay Leno. And then John tries to do that impression. That's so, you know how much Jay Leno must hate John? <laughs> John yeah, we're friends. I go to Jay all the time. George A. appreciates the impression. Uh, uh, come on. <laughs> the job he gave him. Who, who gets that job? You know who gets that job? People who don't stutter. <laughs> <laughs> he, got to, he got to lift a coffee mug after well, a while. Yeah, and <laughs> guess what? How long? Was he, how shit. long was he the announcer for? About eight months. <laughs> Leno had it. You know, it was an embarrassment. It was an embarrassment. So he had to stop giving. He's like, you know, come on. He had to. He had to go. Hey, listen, John, make it right. How about that? Well, you can call you anything to get you off the air. Hey, we'll, we'll call you head writer. Well, well, you're the president of NBC. <laughs> okay, just anything to get you off the fucking air. <laughs> Yeah, now I'm a writer. I don't announce anymore, but I guess it wasn't working out. <laughs> it wasn't working out. Instead of Nicolas Cage, John would say Niggerless Cage. <laughs> and I'm not kidding. That's the guy who had the job as the announcer on The Tonight Show in his audition tape <laughs> said, they said, listen, you know, announce a couple of celebrities as a, as a promo tape. In one of the tapes, John said Niggerless Cage. I'm not, I'm not kidding. John said, "Niggerless cage." The word "nigger" was in his it was in his cage. was in his audition tape for the Tonight Show, and they gave him the job because he's friends with Jay Leno. Once again, I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna count to ten. This is me counting ten in my head. Okay, I'm done. Yeah, tonight, Nicholas Cage, <laughs> Pamela Pamela Anderson. Instead of an A, he put E R at the end. Er. Pamela Anderson. Why even? Why go through the fucking process of auditioning him? Uh, you guys riffing on that tape. I remember when he goes, like, "Give me a band, Scott," and you go, "The Bay City Rollers." Mm -hmm. Oh, so <laughs> funny! Again, a beach ball coming in. So the other night, uh, you know, I I, I just uh, you know I was pitching a no hitter. <laughs> just you know, boom, boom, boom. Everybody's laughing. And I think uh, I don't realize how best he's friends he's is with the Caitlyn Jenner. <laughs> yeah, Boo Jenner's a great guy. <laughs> We're friends. We're friends. <laughs> We're friends. 
how Bruce Jenner at a at a country club? Do you know? <laughs> I mean, do, do you know how many times you probably tried to get security to come over? Uh, there's a Puerto Rican here. Can you do something? There's a Puerto Rican smoking and drinking Schlitz beer. <laughs> he's shirtless and he's on the he's throwing the ball. <laughs> that's it. The guy goes, that's it. You should be a girl. I think you should become a girl. <laughs> Is that what you want to be? <laughs> and you can find it. Be a man. You should be a girl. I'm going to take a shit. You better be take a shit. You should be a girl. <laughs> Yeah, I'm writing a book about a stutter becoming a traitor. It's got a lot of anecdotes in it. You like anecdotes? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, he, John got upset. So not being able to form a a, a joke, he thinks, "What what 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 could I what could I say that'll really uh, you know maybe shocking and and hurt Artie maybe." As if he's capable of doing that. So he creates an awkward moment. I was never for one second hurt or offended. It's just awkward. You know, what do you say? So he goes, Oh, why would you stab yourself nine times? Okay. Wow. Okay. That's a Why did you joke. drink bleach? Because hey, your father fell? Wow, that's <laughs> a joke off. Listen, I can't. So it's like there's a pause because what do you say? It's you say just joke off. Get the fuck out of my house. Thank you, Mary. Uh, and, and uh, yeah, what is there to say? So you keep plowing for, I took a break and then we went back to uh, abusing him. That's all straight out abuse. You're right. Italian, you know what to do. Thank you so much. <laughs> so I, uh, like so, 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 so we, we, so at, after the show, after the show, John, of course, because he, he orders people around, that's what he does, uh, tells Dan after uh, other people pull him aside and go, hey, you know, maybe it was, you don't seem that likable, John, when you brought up out of nowhere the suicide attempt at Artie's father who fell and became a oh, quadruple. Oh, wow. So John, of course, that. under the guise that he's upset that, uh, you know, I might be hurt by it, which I'm not. Under that guise, John goes, oh, for Artie's sake, cut that out. <laughs> he tells Dan, for Artie's sake, cut that out. I don't want to leave. When really he's worried <laughs> That he's gonna look like a complete dick. Jerk off. And there's no other way to look. So he tells Dan, just, you know what, Dan, here's your deal. Just cut out the part where I talk about standard though, the bleach, and this one. <laughs> so basically, what he's saying is, don't air the appearance. <laughs> that was the entire conversation. Right? Don't air the appearance. Yeah. That's what I said. Too bad I wasn't here for that one. I would have hit him with a fucking microphone. You know, you I go. never thought of whether you were here or not, but now I. <laughs> you're right. Would you have that suit on if you were here? Well, I no, I probably wouldn't because I wouldn't be coming there were no from an engagement. Point. Thank <laughs> you, thank you, good point. At least I don't go meeting my wife on a fucking Vegas trip. <laughs> oh God, here we Looking go. Get mad at me because they let me on a plane here by we, myself. Here we go. They let Listen, you on a plane by yourself. I don't That's remember. Your problem. I don't remember saying I, was I have finished. to travel. <laughs> I don't remember. Saying, I remember saying I was finished. <laughs> so, uh, uh, Jesus Christ. Leave Jesus alone. So He's I. Uh, no so I. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Not like mine. <laughs> Jesus has no problems compared to mine right now. So I'm trying to explain. A lot of people are asking me on Twitter, why would John, you know, I thought you were friends. Why would John say, that? okay, there's your first mistake. Because we he's we, a were, we, we were never friends. Again, right. I'm, not, I'm not asking you these questions, Mary. <laughs> uh, uh, they're rhetorical questions. I'm defending you to this jerk. Right, off. just shut his mic off. <laughs> so I, uh, so, so, so uh, my point is, guys, there's, it, it, it defies odds. We were never friends. We're not friends. John John wants to come here because he wants more followers on Twitter. <laughs> like me. when I, I get a call from John, and he goes, "This is the calls I get from John." Oh, could you call Twitter and tell them to <laughs> and tell them to 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 and verify me. <laughs> I said, "Excuse me, John." You're doing good, I said, "Do you have a a, a main number for Twitter?" I go, to, oh, "I'm going to call Twitter. I'm going to go. Uh, someone's going to say, hello, Twitter. Hello, you've reached Twitter. <laughs> yeah, could you verify John Melendez? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Anything else? <laughs> uh, I'm fine. Uh, <laughs> and could you send over two uh, pies with pepperoni? <laughs> Artie, could you cook? Artie, could you cook? Artie, could you cook? 
아니 그, 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 그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그그
I mean, he's this generation that. So uh, also a really nice guy, as I've come to learn. I, I met him very briefly before this a couple of times. So my agent, I signed with a new agent, I had a new manager, and they talked me into going into Tribeca to read for this. And they said, you know, you don't have to go on the uh, early auditions. You, you bypass what they call a producer's read. And the, the lead of the show, a comic by the name of Pete Holmes who created it, it's about his life, will we'll be there. Uh, Judd will be in the room. But if you do well here, you go to Judd, and then that's the screen test, blah, blah, blah. So I said, is it a series regular? And they said, well, uh, right now it's recurring. It could be it's to play another comic, uh, you know, a, a fictional character. So I went in, and they threw the script out. The greatest thing happened. They had a bunch of comics there. and They said, just tell stories from the road. That's going to be the audition improv. And uh, I kind of excel at that. And it went very well. I uh, got a lot of laughs in the room, and I, it was one of those things where I knew I'd get a call back. I got a call back to where Judd is now going to be there, and Apatow for the screen test is two feet from you, and he's like, uh, he uh, he has my first book, Too Fat to Fish, Judd, which helped me out a lot, because he said, just tell stories from the book to Pete, the, the, the star of the show. So uh, that went great, too. So at the very last uh, moment of the, the, the uh, audition, he said, well, why don't we just change the name of this character to Artie? Do you mind? We'll just play you. And I go, that's easy. So uh, tell some more stories. And it just went good because I'm playing me. <laughs> you know, what the fuck? Uh, anyway, I got I booked the part. And uh, long story short, the name of the pilot is Artie Lang. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's one of those things in show business where I got, it's just a, a lucky thing with timing. Yeah. I got the right kind of audition. And uh, I, I had chemistry with this kid. And Judd was a fan and a nice guy. And uh, me and him, uh, it's uh, like a major part of the pilot is me and this kid together. And uh, we shot the pilot, took about two weeks in the fall. It got picked up for eight episodes. And they offered me four of the episodes, I think. And, uh, which was amazing. So now I'm playing me on an HBO series, which is absolutely unreal. <laughs> uh, that Judd Apatow is producing. Well, I have to say congratulations, Artie. Well, thank you so much. I wish you an Emmy. But I mean, now, now that's anticlimactic. Now if I don't win an Emmy. It's <laughs> well, no, I wish you. You're one of those guys where you say uh, to one of your buddies, say you. you're making like a million dollars a year. You say, right, guess how much I made this year? And your buddy goes, 50 million. Now it's like, oh, fuck. <laughs> no, but I would be very proud. I'm not, to yeah, me win. too, but I'm not going to win a fucking Emmy. Now Why everything not? I do, now everything I do is a disappointment. <laughs> oh, I didn't win an Emmy. Good going, Mario. Ruined My the whole vibe God. Of the story. Why don't you just bring up me committing suicide? <laughs> That's not nice. I hope you win an Oscar. No. It's television. It's an, he's an I hope Emmy. you're the first TV actor to win an Oscar. No, I hope you win an Emmy, a uh, People's Choice. Well, just make it more realistic for some, something Globe. like me. Like, uh, I hope you don't get AIDS. <laughs> <laughs> then it's like very, you know, then that, that's doable for me. In 2017, I probably won't get AIDS. <laughs> and if you say, I hope you don't get AIDS, then I look successful. <laughs> you go, you know, I, I go, hey, I got a TV show. Everything's great. Win an Emmy. Oh, fuck. <laughs> now, it's a, now it's a failure. No, it's not. Now you're failure. setting me up for failure. No. I would never set you up for failure. It's like you, it's like you want to tell your friend you, 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 like you, you, you hit a home run. And you go, did you hit a grand slam home run? No. Do you know what Well, I now do? I don't want to tell you the story. <laughs> Okay, I'll tell you what I do. I look through the breakdowns every day. Uh, Mario. To find I, a I, role. I'm trying to. I, I would, <laughs> listen, let me tell you something. If, I, if you asked me to make a list of things I want to hear right now, your story about you looking at the breakdowns would be like, I need a whole notebook of pages to, to write the shit I'd rather hear. <laughs> I'd rather hear the sound of like someone cutting. De de I'd rather hear the sound of ISIS decapitating my grandmother. Oh God! Dude. I'd rather hear the sound she would make being decapitated than hearing about you looking at the breakdowns. <laughs> if you get to me, Art, we're going to let you hear your grandmother screaming while ISIS decapitates her, or Mario Bosco telling you a story about how he gets the breakdowns and looks for roles. I go. I'd rather hear my grandmother. <laughs> Getting the captain, <laughs> especially at this point. <coughs> so, uh, anyway, now I can't. Now the, the story's ruined. Well, I'll tell you what happened. So, the second show, the second episode, Judd makes the whole thing about a story from my stand-up, where I go to Albany, and another story from my book. He combines the two, and in the story, it's a long uh, from two thousand three, 
a road guy that I was working with who I took with me, an opening act. I told him one night in Albany, keep, uh, anybody who tries to give me Coke, keep them away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a hot chick tried to give me Coke that night, and he tried to give, so it was like, I won't give away the story, but that's kind of what happened. So because I tell a story, it creates a role for some actress who's going to get a role because of <laughs> my story on an HBO show. <laughs> Big deal. The audition actresses, I guess nobody got it. I saw a couple of friends of mine. Cut to, I go to the set the other day, and they tell me, oh, guess who's playing the girl who tries to give me a Because in the show, I make out with the girl. She hugs me and everything. Mm-hmm. It's in the script. I go, who? Gina Gershon. Mm-hmm. I said, what? Mm-hmm. And you forget, it's HBO and Judd Apatow. Gina Gershon does shows like that. Mm-hmm. Maybe she'll win an Emmy. Like me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, for the last two days, I have been hugging and, 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 and flirting with and kissing Gina Gershon. Hey, is, is, is my is the principal of my high school, <laughs> Mr. Petraco, the guy who told me I had a disinterest in my walk, and he told me I probably should be a shepherd. <laughs> he told me that I, I probably would not do as well as my father, who climbed roofs for a living. He, 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 that's what he said to me. <laughs> are, are you listening? <laughs> if, you're, if you have grandkids with no technology... Little, little 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 chubby Petraca, whatever your name is, go find your grandfather. <laughs> go find Grandpa Dickface, and and uh, say, hey, there's a guy here, one of your former students, who you said would be a shepherd, and instead he's making out with Gina Gershon. I'm getting thirty G's an episode, <laughs> and there's people who don't want me to say that, but I don't care anymore. Forty eight, I don't have a lot of time left. Thirty grand. Hey, Petraco, that's probably what you fucking made a year. You you clip on tie dick lick. <laughs> you dream ending cocksucker. <laughs> oh, I was the dummy because I thought the blue part of the globe was the sky. <laughs> I guess I was the idiot. Man, no, I'm not a shepherd. <laughs> Bad news. Tell Grandpa, I want you to fucking glue ear sets to him. And put on this podcast. <laughs> I want you to, while Grandpa's sleeping, I want you to glue a pair of headsets to him. Get those cochlear implants <laughs> and run a wire to my podcast. And on a loop, <laughs> on a loop, I want I want him to hear, yeah, Artie Lang, class of 85, well, mm-hmm. summer school, August of 85. Did you graduate? I, 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 I'll say that again. I had to go to summer school to graduate. I wasn't in the regular class in June. I graduated in August. I was fourth in my class in August, though. So they gave you a certificate and a kick in the ass out the door. I, uh, by the way, I was looking for my first time. I, my, I don't have my high school diploma. I don't know where it is. I lost it. You so probably sold it for Coke. Well, let's move on. <laughs> I went from winning an Emmy to so what, I mean, what, is, what is going on with you? Now you're lashing out like John. Is that what you're doing? No. Are you lashing out like I'm John? I'm lashing out. You're, You're a right. scumbag. <laughs> You're lashing out like John now. Why? Because I have I have a job where I kiss Gina Gershon, <laughs> and you're going to an engagement party in Benzner's. Are you jealous because I'm, I'm making out with Gina Gershon? Yeah, I'm very. You, it seems like it because now you're lashing out. Maybe you saw the for <laughs> Maybe uh, you know you won't win an Emmy. I never said you won't win an Emmy. You said you should win an Emmy, <laughs> and you I ruined said- my whole existence. All let's right. move on. I'm sorry. Let's move on. Let's 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 leave this rhetoric. Right, <laughs> Again, the bit was going great with Petraco's grandkid. I was getting laughs. Poke, everything was working, and then here we go. Maybe you got a high school diploma. You what, had me. What, into what it. part of you th- th- thought you were helping with that? Do you hear people laughing? Better. Do you have going, hey, hey, little butt chubby Petraco, go glue it to your grandfather. I'm being funny. <laughs> That's called a, so, someone being funny. And you're sitting there going, uh, I got a $4 suit on. <laughs> <laughs> Let me yell out something because I want to help the bit. I'm, a, I'm the bit helper. I'm Mario the bit helper. Artie's not getting enough laughs. Okay, you hear high school diploma. Did you get a certificate? <laughs> That's what I got. <laughs> Jesus oh, H. Wow. Jesus H. Christmas. Damn, play the fucking gay song and shut the fuck up. Who, who left you, Johnny Carson, asshole? Oh, you're giving dad orders. 
I'm not done yet, prick. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not going well for you so far, Mario. You're going to get fucked I love with Mario. Him. I love Mario. He's a good guy. I like it's worth know. the $180 Uber card. <laughs> Dream ending dick liquor, One by the way. way. Yeah, you dream. You, really? That's what he was. He was a dream that's what, ending. Dick that's liquor. what this principal was a dream ending dick liquor. <laughs> Could you imagine if I told him, "No, Mister Petraka, no, I'm 17 years old and I have a dream. I'm going to grow up and be a comedian, and I'm going to have a hot chick." You, know, <laughs> Gina, you don't know Gina Gershon is yet. She's about seven right now, but she's going to be a big star. She's about 10 years younger than me, and uh, I'm going to have a part on a big, big show, making a lot of money, and uh, I'm going to make out with her. And he would have went, ha, ha, ha. No, you're not, asshole. You'll be working at Home Depot. How's Gina looking these days? Like she's still got, smoking, she's hot, right? Smoking. Mm. She saw her body's perfect. And she hugs me. She's improvising, hugging me, pressing her ample breasts. That's nice. Against my ample breasts. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's a way for that. Did you get a certificate? <laughs> Uh, so yeah, that's what I did, guys. I, the, the, the fucking episode is based on a story that I tell in my book that this very successful producer read. My best-selling book. And uh, the chick in the fucking story is Gina goddamn Gershon! <laughs> and first of all, I knew that. I'd have fucking made up where she blows me. <laughs> oh, God. I can't even tell you how the real story ends. After, after the episode airs, I'll tell you the real story ends. I want to kill this guy who opened for me. Kill him! Hmm. And of course, Albany, if someone's been there to do stand-up, it is not. <laughs> that ain't the happiest place on earth. <laughs> it just isn't. Uh, so there you go. So uh, I, I've been doing that. So that's why we, we had, a, had a long filming week. That's why we're, we're doing a Friday night show. We had the, the Big John episode and now this. Uh, the Big Mario episode. <laughs> uh, Mario, how do you feel that one? I'm done with the story now. Are you okay? I'm, I'm going to interrupt uh, Mario, Art. <laughs> Go ahead. I want to do to you what you did to other people. I'm going to be Mario Bensko. Go ahead. Go right ahead. I sell candy to people <laughs> in Coney Island. There you go. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. How are you? I was at an engagement party. <laughs> Does that feel good, Mario? I had a book signing six people came to. <laughs> All right. Uh, that feel it... good? How does that feel? I'm Mario Bensko. Go ahead, Artie. <laughs> Dan, it's hot in here. Do you have any caffeine-free diet Dr. Pepper art? Does that feel good? Do you do that when you sell candy to people? No. Coney Island, this guy's trying to propose to his girlfriend. <laughs> Honey, I love you so. Do you want to buy a Twix bar? Okay, I think he's got enough. I think he's, he's, he's had enough. I'm just kidding. Like, Sorry, Art. I like Mario. Me too. I, Mario, I do like you. Yeah, I'm just trying to. You like me. I do this. Well, I let Mario. Let, let Mario retort, Let's not talk. Guys offended me. I offended oh. you. There you go. No, I do this weird thing where I think about the people that are going to be listening to this, and I want to make them laugh. Oh, okay. oh we're fucking think I'm sitting here for. <laughs> <laughs> well, to give me ammunition to make them laugh. Ammunition. Yeah, it's, well, you I guess that's a good lead into it. You talked about my $4 yeah. suit. Fuck that's way get... too much. I said $3. Yeah, that's way too much. No, you said $4 first. Where'd you get that fucking t-shirt from? Well, it says Fenway Park in Boston on it, Detective. What do you think I got it from? Fenway Park. There it you must go. have gave you a boner in the shirt where it came with it. <laughs> what? <laughs> a of what? what you... <laughs> okay. Okay. That's a perfect leader for this dance. <laughs> now, uh, first of all, it's a pleasure to have both of you here. Mm-hmm. What, um, what, what's the first song, Dan? Now, I trust you, Dan, to play the good one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the first one is... Uh, Again, the premise is, you know, uh, in the last... Uh, I'll be honest with you. I've known Dan now for five years. He's very effeminate. And I don't know. He, I don't, he's probably not gay. But, uh, you know, he does He does do a lot of very effeminate things. And uh, this Rick Steves guy who's heroes with him, he gets the sweats around, is, uh, that, that's a red flag. But Dan also does manly things like uh, the laundry. <laughs> <laughs> With the blue so, balls. Well, exactly. You got the blue balls. Now, uh, so people have been sending in songs. Now, I didn't I didn't ask for this, but people on the Oh, yes, yeah. you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> did I? I'm sorry. 
So people have been sending in song parties to big songs uh, where Dan, the premise is Dan's gay. And the first one was very good. It was to the, uh, the group Chicago, close to Dan's heart. <laughs> Uh, Dan is gay in Denmark. Mm-hmm. He let Rick Steve shoot cum in his eye. <laughs> okay, so that's the premise. So these are those songs. Now, these are new ones. Now, what right. is this, Dan? Uh, this one is to uh, the Sopranos theme. Oh, that's great. Oh, they sent me that one. Who did? The fa- the guy that wrote this, a fan of the show. That's the a perfect podcast. intro. Go ahead. <laughs> it's, yes. funny. it's funny you're ready. Woke up this morning, <coughs> drank myself some cum. <laughs> My uncle always said I was the hottest one. He said, You're one in a million, and your ass is fine. But you were born in Chicago with some really squinty eyes. And he woke up this morning, Mario, don't, don't, don't all don't his cum was gone. <laughs> My uncle never told me about right and wrong. <laughs> but you're looking good, Danny. I believe that your ass is fine. Shame about it. Born in Chicago with some really squinty eyes. Just say it now. Woke up this morning. Got a cum shot. Got a cum shot in my eyes. I look at God's wild. Said I woke up this morning, my uncle flipped me upside down. Lord about things ain't been the same since my hair got thick and brown. But I'm a real jizz addict, I snort hot cum lines. I got it. Born in Chicago with some really squinty eyes. Yeah, woke up this morning. He swallowed all the cum and he swallowed all the cum Swallowed all the cum <laughs> Who did that? Oh. His name's Vinny <laughs> His name's Vinny Is that Vinny Mother Tag? Yeah, yeah Vinny. Wow. That is hilarious Snorted hot cum lines <laughs> <laughs> Wow, Vinny Okay. Way to go. Again, Mario, why did you feel necessary <laughs> to sing along with the song? It's the guy's song. It's Are you the that? theme from The Sopranos with a cum. So, no, no, yeah, but we're listening to a song parody. We're trying to hear the lyrics. Do you know what a song parody is? <laughs> yes. Right, okay. He changed the <laughs> lyrics. Yes. So we're trying to hear what the lyrics are. That's what makes it funny. The new lyrics. But I You're, have heard it already. Who gives a fuck? <laughs> Nobody knows you heard it already. <laughs> In school, did you take uh, any classes about the? Uh, I had ADD. About the planets. No. Okay. It, was the was Earth called Mario in your class? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Okay. All right. Well, that was. Uh, don't. don't my, my point is, I love you. Don't sing over the song, parents. <laughs> well, that's that's a home run. Let's hear the next one. All right. We started to play this, I think, the other a uh, couple uh, like last week, and uh, we didn't finish it. So uh, we somebody started talking. And then this is uh, a guy named Daniel Thompson. I never heard this. <laughs> There's a man who so left. Rick Steve's cum is on his breath He's denying he's so gay and jealous <laughs> He's proud of his cats Yet he hides it when he's mad Sometimes Artie can push the wrong button <laughs> In his short, faggy shorts, he pretends to like sport as he jumps in the way of the TV screen. In his head, he's a six, good enough for Michael Douglas with the word he can get so defensive. <laughs> oh, Ooh, ooh, he's denying he's so gay and jealous. 
Jesus. Ramp it up. Ramp it up. Ramp it up. Ramp it up. <laughs> oh, that's great! That awesome. Awesome. These guys Man, put a, that guy listen to this show. Oh, yeah. Puts a lot of effort. What is that? I don't even get that reference at the end. That was just laughing. The, the pizza. Re- the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, jumps in front of the TV for sports when he did that. Oh, 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 diabetic pit. Diabetic piss. <laughs> that is fantastic. You guys can keep talking. Holy cow! Do these songs bother you? Like, how, no, what's it like for you when they come in? I don't care. Yeah. All I know is I spent three days sledgehammering a, a fence in Chicago. People want to come and question my masculinity. There you go. There you go. Stand up for your masculinity. <laughs> my dad. My dad said, uh, he's like, oh, you and I can do that real quick or whatever. And he just had back surgery, so I knew it was going to mostly be me. And then right. we, we started to dig the dirt for the fence because the wind had blown this fence down right on my property. And uh, he goes, well, I didn't know there was going to be cement there. You just you, you should have hired someone to do it. I go, that's what I wanted to do. Right. <laughs> that Yeah, those songs, I really, Vinny, yeah. just uh, freaking brilliant. I know. So, Mary, how's it going with you? You think I uh, offend you? I was just trying to nah, bust your balls a little bit. He doesn't, he doesn't get offended. Sure. I yeah. don't no, get I know. Offended. I just heard it go, fuck you, so. I hear you. <laughs> I hear you. Hey, how'd you like Mike Boschetti? You met Mike Boschetti the other night. Yes, Mike Boschetti. We hit it off. He, um, he wants to You guys made back. out? What do you mean you hit it off? <laughs> no, we hit it off as guys. He's from Staten Island. I'm from Brooklyn. We're both Italian. You know, we can You know, that's not everything, by the way. <laughs> I noticed you say that. I, you're always like, oh, Brooklyn, Italian. There's more to life than one borough and, and just being Italian. What else? What not else? really. Let's say that somebody's like, tell me about Mario Bosco. Forget about Brooklyn and Italian. What do you tell them? That- well, I like L.A. So if somebody's like, tell me about Mario, you, your number one thing is a city that you like. I like to cook. I like to eat. What else do I like to Don't do? Don't panic. You're panicking now. I'm not panicking. What's your favorite thing to cook? Cock. <laughs> if it's in your mouth. Real quick, too, speaking of when Artie was talking about Melendez, did you see Dan Monica on Twitter? Um... Melendez was saying something about his appearance, and Monica's like, "Yeah, maybe next time, don't drink like forty-eight beers." Oh, he, he had a case. Her. He had a case of beer. He just blocked her, and he was already he drank that afternoon a lot of beer, so it was not a good. And he always asks so much from Artie, like, yeah, tweeting, and can you come to this gig? And he's, oh, can I open for you? You know, the last time I saw him live, he tried to go in the audience and beat somebody up because they were yelling at him. Get out of here. It wasn't funny. It was in L.A. Yeah, I had to stop him. Artie was on stage, and he was he, he and two guys were going to go out to... He knew who the guy was that was heckling him. There were two guys in the balcony, and he was going to go at the Kodak Theater and beat this guy up. And I go, you're not going anywhere. Yeah, that's so good. So we almost got into a fight, like on the side of the stage. These song parodies are funny and all, but I will say from getting to know Dan, no more of a solid guy Thank than Dan Vlado. Yep. Listening to Dan's stories. <laughs> it's like we were saying before, like Quentin Tarantino. You could sit through one of them and just listen for 10 minutes. You get this whole range of information. Characters are being introduced. Storyline, plot. Then at the end, it all comes out to be. I'm going to go to the washroom, so let's take a break. All right, cool. Uh, where am I at? Where am I at? Let me know when we're, uh, we're rolling. Hang on a second. Yeah, I'm sorry. The, the, the TV was on, and uh, I guess it was on CBS, and uh, Colbert was on and now it's 12:38, and this is that guy that james colbert guy right james. is this coburn there coburn yeah jimmy james coburn <laughs> no, no, that's no that's a guy that from the dirty Ford. dozen james. that's well no no no. but i'm saying he's he's doing a cold open for a talk show right now uh, james Coburn, the 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 uh the fat effeminate guy right yes james coder what's his name uh mario you know here he is this guy Look at how bad this fat guy wants to fuck Thor. Gordon. <laughs> Gordon. Gordon, right. The guy who plays Thor, this, and this Coder guy is married, right? Yes. Look at how much he wants to fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming. Hey. Thank you. He, this guy looks like Dame Judi Dench <laughs> when she was 28. That's what he looks like, James Judi Dench. He looks like Judi Dench. <laughs> 
got an Of course, you show. hosted the Tony Awards. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he did. He hosted the Tony Awards. Uh, I got. I got to tell you, man. Uh, the, the you know the, the 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 Florida thing, the Orlando thing has got me so it, it just everybody should be mad, and there's all different opinions coming out now, uh, and uh, we just heard a helicopter going over the um, the, the the condo here, and that as loud I've, I've lived on the Hudson here for 15 years, that's as loud as I've ever heard uh, a clear a military helicopter. When I was in Afghanistan, I was on a Black Hawk and a uh, an Apache, both of them, and that's what they sound like. That was a military helicopter. It, I'm telling you, this fucking guy, the Orlando scumbag who killed all those poor people. I mean, you imagine you're not having just you're having fucking fun. You're in America. We're in America, the greatest country in the world. You're out having a free American night, dancing. You just just fucking drinking. You're in America. Having a blast. And some fucking guy who gets radicalized. What does that even mean? What does that fucking mean? Is radicalized. Some guy, you know, uh, you know, isn't getting enough attention. And that's all this guy that's was. You see the videos movie. of him. You see the videos of this guy. He's just craving for attention. Everything is about how he's going to be uh, the next star or whatever the fuck he's doing. He's a security, security guard in some documentary. About the uh, about that oil spill, you know. Listen, again, who knows what happens? People are nuts, and the internet is adding crazy to the fact. Uh, to, to, is adding attention to crazy. Like these crazy people are getting attention they never got before. So it's kind of justifying their existence, and they think they're important, and they think they have a mission, and they go in and shoot fifty fucking innocent people. Fifty. Those are war numbers, man. That's sad. 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 Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Again, thank you. That's the one word I would have come up with. <laughs> but I, have and, and, to I mean, say, you just repeating it was very powerful. Audie, I have a friend that works at that club. You do? And he took the day off because it was his nephew's birthday, three years old, and he went to Florida to, to Disney. He was supposed to bartend that night. He would have been shot. Oh, yeah. Wow. Sure. Mm. Well, you're really putting a face on it for us. No, but I'm Was sad. he a friend? That would, I don't understand. Did anyone understand what, understand what he just said? Where does the guy live? The guy the, lives in Florida. He yeah. works at he works at some bar. What's that bar called? Well, Pulse. 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 The club. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's in the news once or twice. The name of the. Okay. Go so ahead. And he bought ten stand. And he took the night off because he had family in town. I'm gonna bail on the story. I'm gonna no, bail. I'm serious. So the guy got killed. No, the guy didn't get killed. Oh. But he would have if he would have been in. So so if he so would have been okay tennis. now. Ben, do you have a story of someone who would have got killed if they were there? Not even close. Not my, even close. Uh, my cousin has nothing to do with me. <laughs> I'm saying my cousin. Uh, I have a couple of cousins who would have been killed if they were there. No, but that's what you said, Dan. Do you have anybody who would have been killed if they were there? <laughs> no, my heart goes. You, out you to basically, the Mario. Here's what you did. Family. If Mike Boschetti had been there, no, no. Here's what you did. Thank God he wasn't. Right. You stopped the, the show <laughs> where I was talking about the real victims <laughs> to the say to victims. say that you know somebody who, if they were there, would have gotten killed. But luckily, they weren't there. Audience. Luckily, I wasn't there. Luckily, oh. we all weren't there. Because if you're there, you get shot. And I was talking about the people that were there. And once again, it's as if you physically have a crowbar. <laughs> and you're crowbarring in. Non sequiturs. In the middle of comedy, in the middle of my poignant Well, there speech. was another shootout in Coney Island last week. I ran like the wind. I text you about it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you text me about quite a bit, I know. What the <laughs> fuck are you laughing at, Dan? Can I go on with the other shooting? Okay. Can, can, I mean, can, can we have a second where it's not about you? Again, now you, that you ruined the comedy. You even ruined the point and stuff. My point was this. Uh, you know, it it it, it 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 really shows how, like, you know, uh, there's stereotypes about every group of people. One of the stereotypes about gay people is that they're flamboyant fashion, and uh, they can be very, very entertaining when they're critiquing what you're wearing, and very entertaining when they're telling you how great what they're wearing is. It's actually very funny. And uh, in show business, over the years, I've made, you know, really good friends with, like, hair and makeup people who, they, the way they describe what they're wearing is really, like, you want to tell them to go into show business. They should be on the other side of the camera. And as, as tragic, as insanely tragic as this was, one of the 
one of the things that in a way makes it more sad to show you how, you know, this guy killed a group of people who, you know, the stereotype is they sort of, they sort of love life so much that they're, they're so into life and, and, and they, they like, you know, uh, being uh, really, really flamboyant and entertaining about it. And their lives are snuffed out. People who really sort of attack life. And they, they found a place to where they, uh, they're safe, they're not judged, blah, 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 in Florida at a club. And y y they think that's a place they're, they're, they're not touched by the crazy hate that goes on. And this guy finds them because his hate's so strong. And, and, and ruins it. But a, a humorous thing in the whole thing is the way when, when you hear about stories that the news loves to put on about, uh, you know, uh, there's, there's heroes in every story like this. And usually, uh, you know, <laughs> the story's like, oh, you know, I got the guy and, uh, you know, he had a he had a bullet wound and I put it around like a tourniquet or something. I took my shirt off. And, you know, that's how it normally goes. A couple of these gay people describing it, uh, you know, look, they, they made it entertaining without even realizing it. It was so great because you realize just just how how into life they are. The one guy, not, like picture what I just said, like a boring like uh, guy telling that story. Here's how a gay guy describes putting a tourniquet on. I took off this Holston blouse I'm wearing. First of all, gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> I bought it's an eight hundred dollar Holston blouse. I bought at this boutique on Main Avenue in Orlando. For I'll, I'll get into that later. But I take it off and I decide to ruin. I made the decision to ruin this blouse and I tie it around my friend's arm and I make a wonderful knot. I make a wonderful knot that people could see for days. I fray the knot. <laughs> like obviously I'm adding words for comedic effect, but that's what the guy sounded like. <laughs> he was enter he was entertaining in the way he was describing being a hero. <laughs> And everyone said I was a hero. Everyone said I was a hero because, and everyone said my tourniquet was the best looking tourniquet. <laughs> uh, and, and, and it was funny, but in a way more sad because you go, yeah, this guy shot people like that. People, ha people who enjoy life, actually, and, and attack it. They were out at a club having a good time gone snuffed out and you know obviously it wouldn't be surprising this guy was maybe a, a, a gay guy who was a sort of self-loathing and because they preach that hate in uh, in their interpretation of that religion um, quite frankly all religion preaches the hate Christian uh, Christians uh, don't love gay people read the Bible and these people interpret that and they kill them that's what they do that's what these morons do. It's very religion's fucking scary, man. More people have died in the name of religion than anything else in the world, and uh, I guess that's what this radicalized bullshit means. They they take it literally, and they go, "It's my mission. I'll get the seventy virgins when I meet Allah if I kill fifty gay people first. Well, I hope I hope all the fucking virgins are dudes, <laughs> motherfucker. Are we talking about Dan? Once, oh. once again, bringing it down. Oh, so weighing in a miss. Uh, in any event, uh, my, my, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, 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 my heart goes out to the families. Imagine all those families getting those terrible calls. Mm -hmm. they, they had, there was a whole ramada in of grieving families. That's what that guy created, the pain. They all went down there waiting for news. Some had to wait for almost a full day about whether or not they're loved one was dead or not and they're all at the same hotel they're all at the ramada Inn, and you're depressed at the breakfast of the ramada Inn anyway <laughs> imagine being at the continental breakfast of the ramada Inn, and a relative might be dead like that's a really bad day did a you continental see, breakfast or did you see the text messages coming in uh the the one woman whose son was there just saying the shooter's here i'm gonna die that's uh, another aspect of it yeah in real time you're, that, you're right this from your that's son. another aspect of life now the cell phones Talk about dark. These first responders describe that these dead bodies have cell phones ringing. <laughs> They're trying to find... Dan finding that funny. <laughs> they went, <laughs> what was that about? No, I just... Hmm. I, I, you know, you went, <laughs> that was a laugh. That was definitely a laugh. Why did you laugh at that? I, I don't know. I just, well, enough of your anti-gay rhetoric. <laughs> God, one time I killed a kid. Yeah, no, I, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, talk about how sad... Like, if you can't answer the phone and go, uh, what are you going to say? Yeah, yeah, your kid's dead. I got him right here. Uh, what do you say? You got to let it ring. 
and the other person on the other line ringing, ringing. You know your kid was in that club, and sad. these people hear it. Do you oh, want to say sad two more times? It is sad. What do you think? It's not sad. Well, you're saying these sad three parents? times. Well, I mean, do you have a more? Tra- that's why. That's the point of my story. It's sad. Tragic. Tragic. Heartbreaking. All good stuff. Uh, you should get a job as a uh, wordsmith. <laughs> So uh, the the point is, this guy Mantine, whatever his name was, what was the guy's name? Mantine. Something? Omar Mateen. Omar Mateen. Omar Mateen. Omar. You know, he was a terrorist. Omar Marino. He terrorized the Yankees center field for three years. <laughs> Hit about one eighty. But uh, his wife, they wanted to arrest. He was about to get arrested, and uh, you know, Ben brought this up, but he came in here. It's a good point. This is scary shit. That guy, Omar's wife, they were going to arrest her because supposedly she knew it and didn't stop the, 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 the plan. She was going to get hit with 49 counts of murder. And she disappeared, right? Yeah. They can't find her. Since Wednesday, I believe. Okay, a couple of theories. <clears throat> My theory is ISIS radicalized these people. And they, if you notice, all these guys die. Their mission is to be dead as well. It's a suicide mission. These bo- guys, you strap them on a bomb, obviously they want you to die. That's why that one guy in Brussels, they were they were pissed at him. They were looking for him too. He was looking, the cops and ISIS was looking for the guy because you're supposed to off yourself because you know too much about the organization. They convince them, they brainwash them to kill these people, then kill themselves. And uh, the, the shooter obviously was going to get they call, you know, suicide by cop. He came out blazing. He knew he'd get shot. He was dead. The wife is alive. And she gets arrested, who knows? So I think ISIS could have taken her out because the FBI was looking at her. They were going to make the arrest today. Does she get away under the FBI's watch? I don't think so. I, I, that's hard to do unless you have the resources. Maybe ISIS helps her escape or kills her. What's more realistic? Killing her. Killing her? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't value her life anyway. Who knows? I don't know. Maybe a, a chick that brainwashed is valuable to have, but uh, maybe she was supposed to kill herself. I don't know. I don't know. How do you fight this terrorism? People are giving Obama shit. To, you know, Trump and, and Hillary Clinton are doing what they're supposed to do. They're, they're politicians, and they're, they're trying to score points on this. They want to get elected. Uh, and Hillary Clinton and Democrats saying Trump is exploiting it. They're doing the same thing. Trump's just saying it louder. Of course they're exploiting this. That's what fucking politicians do. But, uh, you know, you can't stop a guy. If, 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 you know, a guy is in his house and decides he's going to do that, how do you stop him? What does it matter who's president? It's unbeatable. You're talking about the Cold War here. It's decades of time have to go by before this is beat. You've got to start hopefully teaching people not to, not to hate people like this. How do you do that? If one family teaches a kid to hate like that, they become a terrorist. They go do it. How does a president stop that? You don't. I think you have to be more pro-gun, frankly. Well, so... Uh, I'm not kidding. I well, think, explain that. Well... Because, I, I mean, I don't really have a... Uh, so you want... So if I the, do. Uh, let me, if, okay. Yeah. If, if the people in that place had guns... I'm not saying How that. does that help? I'm not... First of all, I'm not saying that. I'm not going to go down the, the bunny hole of... Oh, if they had guns, like when Trump said it in, in oh, France. Oh, I'm just saying the well, idea... No, right. I mean, well, no, I'm saying, so why, why does guns help this situation? Because I think in a situation where if you're aware that more people are carrying than just you, you're less likely to do something. And I'm not painting with a broad brush. Okay, but what if the guy wants to die, though? You see, that's the problem. You're talking about it's hard to... How do you, how do you fight a war against well, a guy who wants to die? He doesn't care if you have guns. He wants to die. That's He's going to di- take out as many of you first, though. That's I think that's different. I think if the guy wants to die, he can do a multitude of things. I, I think, though, that the idea that we have to look at gun control and say, you know, these guns shouldn't fall into people's hands or, or people shouldn't be allowed to carry these guns. Don't tell me that because the way that I feel, I can protect myself just as good, if not better, than anybody else. So give me the opportunity to do that. But that's you, though. Well, what about everybody else? That's up to them. I'm just saying, though, that what what I don't like and what I don't agree with is, let's say that you don't want to get a gun or Dan doesn't want to get one or Mara doesn't get one, then don't turn around and tell me that I shouldn't have one. And that's my problem. I'm not telling you that, but why? No, I'm saying that's my problem with with the left. Do you think that guy should have been able to get a gun? 
I I don't see any reason. See, I had this conversation with with a couple buddies. Right, the fact that he was on a watch list. I mean, not just a gun. He got an assault weapon. Well, let, he got let's be something clear. that he, kills very rapidly, and a lot of people. He got an AR-15, which is a semi-automatic. That, that, <laughs> but listen, all that means is that every time you pull the trigger, a bullet comes out. So it's not very rapidly it's based on what he's doing with his trigger finger okay and, and you know i think it's a big discussion as far as he was on a watch list should he get a gun i used to feel that the way that well he was on a watch list maybe not but then what's to prevent any of us from being put on a list right. that the government says now nah, you're on this particular list the problem for me is that and you brought up before Artie, uh uh his wife the fbi had then let go right. the fbi had tabs on him twice and let go so right. who's telling the fbi to back off well, there, the, there's well, the, guy, well there's, the guy's an American citizen. He's got to do something wrong before you, you can't just arrest a person for thinking something. But if you're on a... If, and if, saying something at work, you can't... I mean, that that's a slippery slope, too. How do you, well, who do you arrest? You know? Trump goes in, he's going to throw them all out. I mean, uh, I'm saying, how do you arrest a guy? Like, why? what should the FBI have been able to do to this guy based on what he was saying at work? I, arrest him or detain him for saying, I'm, you know, I have these thoughts? I don't know what FBI policy is there. Well, you know, uh, it's, the it's, FBI policy know. is the Constitution. Read the Constitution. That's what their policy is. You can't go in and say, I'm arresting you because of what you're saying. Right. No, I'm, I'm not saying uh, that. They, they, not only can they not do that, they can let him loose. And in this world, he can, even after saying that and being questioned by the FBI, he can literally stroll into a gun store and buy an A-car, a car, whatever those things are, and then just go and. Uh, and shoot 50 people. Uh, listen, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't really have a stance on it at all. It's a, it's a very slippery political issue because in some cases, you're right. But in a lot of cases, who knows? It, it's just I think that people sometimes with the, on the gun side, if you're going to argue the negative there, are under this, uh, this illusion that, you know, those people in those cafes in Paris are going to immediately go from uh, having a glass of wine in a cafe mm. mode to rolling over like Bruce Willis in The Last Boy Scout and taking out 40 terrorists mm. who are in terrorist mode. You're just going to have more guns and you're going to have bullets going. <laughs> Donald Trump literally said that was my favorite thing. He goes, all I know is if there were bullets going both ways, a lot less people would have died. <laughs> what? Well, then, Art, how do you explain then in, in recent days the uh, in, in Orlando, the LGBT community, gun sales have have surged, have skyrocketed down They're there? I think to protect themselves. Absolutely. And there's nothing That's wrong logical. With that. But OK, of course not. But I'm saying if if uh, they knew that if there was laws that they knew that that guy couldn't get the gun, maybe that wouldn't be the case. Now, of course, uh, that's going to serve. But the problem is you have to be realistic. Whether there's, there's laws or not, Paris has the strictest gun laws on the planet. They're going to get them. It's like abortion. Why not make it legal? People are going to have it illegally done. So you, do you want uh, some lunatic putting a hanger uh, in your girlfriend's pussy? Mm. Or do you, uh, do you want to have a doctor doing it legally? That's the thing. People are going to get guns anyway. You really want a gun? My wife? No, my girlfriend. Yeah, he can go after her with the hanger. <laughs> well, hang my wife? Don't touch my wife. My girlfriend? Yeah, hang it up. Very, very, very hard situation. <laughs> I know. it's uh, The gun thing is... Uh, I know Howard, Howard made the news today. I know Howard is a big, big uh, gun proponent. Howard has uh, uh, a lot of guns, actually. And, uh, you know, uh, look, you're talking about a guy in the public eye, as, as public eye as you can get. And Howard sells, he yells out a lot of controversial things, and he, you know, wants to protect himself. And he came out saying exactly what you're saying, Ben. Did you hear Howard today? Wolves and sheep. I, I he, right, the wolves yeah. and sheep analogy. Mm -hmm. He, uh, I don't listen. He to made Howard the news. Is. CNN. Uh, I, well, it, you know, I know this because it was on the news. They quoted Howard on CNN and Fox uh, for saying what he said. And he's very much on your side. He's very much like. Uh, and I, again, I don't have a side. I'm just being the devil's advocate here. It's hard to figure out. Danny, what do you think politically there? You, you, you could be more articulate about this, maybe. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I do not want to take away anyone's right to own a gun. However, I do not think the reason why so many people died is that those bullets are so coming in so fast and so deadly because that is an assault 
weapon. Well, is it? Well, what the, you say that p- pulling a, a trigger. Uh, what? What is wh- a semi-auto? A, a fully automatic that the military has is you hold the trigger back and, and the bullets like, go. Right. Until the, I understand. Right. Semi-automatic is just right. every time the the trigger gets pulled. But those a, are a, military. Well, bullets. you could pull it a lot of times. I, I, it was McChrystal that said in the paper today they they should not be. Those are for military people. They should not be able to you buy. Know, well, I was going to say, why does a guy need a military gun? Right. Yeah. What, it's what? not, but it's not a military rifle, though. I it, think it that's, is, well, how about is, this? How about this? Generals have said that it's a military. All rifle. right. Well, that's that's whatever. That that's a conversation that we'll go crazy with. But I tend to be on Dan's side there. But whatever. Right. It, it doesn't matter. It's it's, it's it, a rifle's a rifle after a certain amount. Uh, my point is this: How about this? As a gun guy, as much as you hate this terrorist, and we all do, the FBI, if the guy's talking like he's talking at work, okay, can't arrest him. That's un-American completely. Are you okay with the FBI saying, okay, you're talking like this, we're not going to arrest you, but guess what? You can never buy a gun. You're now on a list because you were talking like this, you're, you can never buy a gun, you can't buy a water pistol. Are you okay with that? I, I quite frankly would be fine with it. If the guy was yelling out, I like I, I I'm pro ISIS. I'm watching these videos that you know that that, that radicalized that, video. Yeah, that okay. That's what the guy was saying. They found him on his computer. Blah blah blah. It's unconstitutional. You can't you know you can't uh, surveil the guy, which they might be doing anyway to all of us. Or you can't arrest the guy. But would you be okay with as a gun guy to say okay because you're talking like that, never a gun ever. Can you get a gun? So. <clears throat> No, I'm not okay with it. And the reason okay. why is we've all had days where we say stuff. But look, I'm we've not. We've all had th- days where we say <laughs> I'm pro ISIS. I, I know. I knew that was going to come out like that. But Ben, we've not other, all had days. Like the that. other issue is, is that, the, <laughs> I want to no, behead you and drown you and no, get, what skin I, you alive. We've all had. What days. I meant to say is, we all had days where, where we get heated and say things we don't mean. Not to that heightened extent. Yeah. Now, sometimes the other you is, say like, "I'm glad you don't have a car." Nobody wanted to turn that guy in. Right. Why is that? Because they didn't want to come across got a, as got anti-Muslim. An AK, got an AK-50. <laughs> yeah. No, they didn't want to come across as anti-Muslim, Islamophobic. So, in, in part two, I think political okay, correctness. They didn't, had a, okay, okay. Political that, correctness. That, had a maybe, problem. maybe there's that. How about this? They didn't want to come across as anti a guy with a bunch of guns because they're scared shit of him. <laughs> he's yeah. got a, he's got a bunch of guns. I think a lot of people are over the political correctness right now. I think, quite frankly, I think they know they'd have a lot of people on their side if they went, look, the guy in the turban is saying fucked up shit. I, I, I'd be fine with that. But then, Artie, why, why then does nobody say anything? Why, why then if well, you come out of the A lot of more people, a lot more people do guys at his work go to the boss and say, hey. No, first of all, we're hearing this story about a time when they did it. I'm sure it happens every day now where people do say stuff. I'm sure there's terrorist attacks that don't happen every day that we don't know about. Right. Where people do say stuff. I guarantee that's happening. This was a time where people didn't. But here's the thing. People did say stuff. A, a, a lot of people said stuff about this guy. It was on record. That one guy they interviewed for a, a whole a whole three hours on CNN said, I called the police three times. And that's why he got interviewed. But the police call him in. They interview him. The guy says the right things. And they let him go. What do you, it's America. That's, that's one of the negatives. Oh, right. You let him go. And uh, it was Second Amendment. That guy is a terrorist in his own head and he knows it. But he's got Second Amendment rights too. Look. It's the problem with a democracy. That's one of the negatives. What are you going to do? Why didn't they search his house and see if he, you because know. Because you're not allowed to. He's an American citizen. You can't search a guy's house just because he's yelling shit out. Can't do it. The only time, if you make a threat against the president, you can be arrested. That's the one time. If you threaten to kill a U.S. president out loud, you can, for just saying something, be arrested. Otherwise, you can't search a guy's house for just saying something. And I don't want to go down that road either. Just like Ben's right, if you're if you're pro gun, you have to say I don't want that guy to be denied guns either. You have to have it on both ways. And what happens? A tragedy could happen. Yeah, you can't. Well, the problem is, you the guys are nuts. Nuts exist. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? You, you, there's a lot of people that you give a gun to. They're never going to do something wrong with it. Most people because they're not nuts. How do you fight against nuts? You, you can't. I think we have to resolve ourselves to that. The problem is there's a whole group of people that are taking this nut thing and using the internet. And the Unabomber was fucking right. I mean, the guy was nuts. If you read that manifesto, shit's happening that he predicted would happen. Of course, he went about it wrong. Right. Uh, the answer is not bombing people. But, uh, you know, the, the, the information, the internet, uh, communication, they're using that 
to take brainwashable people. And there's a lot of them out there who they're not doing well in life. You start selling them. The reason you don't have a job is not because you suck at everything. It's because of Obama. It's because of America. It's because of this, that, and the other. And you start with that. Here's why you don't get laid. It's not because you're a loser. It's because of Obama. <laughs> or uh, it's because of your mayor. It's because of this guy. It's because you're kicking a gun, blah, blah, blah. And they prey on them. And, uh, you know, they, 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 they put that gunpowder, that spark into that crazy pool that never was there before. And uh, they're actively trying to turn those nut people into violent people. That's never happened before. And it's one group that seems to be doing it. And that group happens to be part of one religion. Uh, that's where the PC stuff can be. People don't want to say that. It's not everybody in that religion. It's a very small percentage, an insanely small percentage. But the fact is, this group is part of one religion. Don't you feel like already even even saying that nowadays is starting to get tired? Like we know it's not everybody in that religion. We know it's a very small part. People but it, and but politicians especially do have to say it's sickening. You're right, but they have to say it. They're politi- They want to make sure that someone hearing it for the first time doesn't get offended. But I'm, uh, I know. Yeah, like, go down the list: nine yeah. eleven, Fort Hood, San Bernardino, France, no, Brussels. They're all. No, listen, it's not the Scotch Irish doing no, this. No, I know. <laughs> you know. But people say that all the time too. People get tired of hearing that on the other side. Right. Everybody knows. It's obvious what's happening, but how do you fight it? How do you fucking fight it? Get a gun. Well, well, here's, well, well here's, what, exactly. here's the problem. Get a gun. You, you know, what's happening is you get Donald Trump comes along, and he's going to suggest shit that is unconstitutional. What Donald Trump is saying is to be American, we have to be un-American. But he's kind of saying that. He won't come out and say it, but he's saying to get back to being American, we have to be un-American for a little while. And not let Muslims in the country. That's insane for a guy who is nominated in a major party to become the U.S. president is to that- say to say he wants to ban an entire religion from coming here. That is on a level of uh, of of un-American uh, uh, bullshit that uh, we've never heard before. Maybe. Now, uh, yeah, but, but 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 Trump is saying, "Look, I'm not for this, but guys, what else are we going to do?" How else are we going to figure this out? The problem is he doesn't know what to do. Okay, now you ban all of them. He goes, until we find out what's going on. What does that mean, what's going on? You're going to piss off the other peaceful arrows, and now you're going to create a major war. What, what Trump is proposing is not unprecedented in wartime. What, what do you mean? When uh, in, in U.S. history, uh, you know, you have to look to, to cordon off groups of people, okay? Right. Uh, uh, races and, and religions and cord them off during wartime to make sure that you get your affairs in order. You're talking it's about not, Japanese internment camps? Absolutely. It's not. You think that was a good thing? No, I like George Takai. It's not a good thing. <laughs> what I'm is just that saying. But well, it's not, but, so what are you arguing for? It's, it's not unprecedented to look to get your but affairs in order. Does that make it a good thing? I, I just I want what's best for this country, and maybe it's not up to Japanese internment camps did not win the war. We won the war because we dropped two bombs. I'm not a I'm, again. I'm not a fan of Japanese internment camps. But I'm so what are you what are to, you saying though? I don't have those answers. I'm, I'm well, that's here. the point. Nobody does. But, but why automatically look at if we're going to do something like as Trump says, get our affairs in order, or look at people and vet people? Yeah, there's a certain class of people that nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, are at the base of these horrific tragedies. So what do you so, do? What, uh, but, so but what do you do? American citizens. I understand. They were born American here. Citizens. You so can't. You can't. Ben, you can't do it without a plan because you just then you just you just. You're just detaining people. You're putting people in prison for I'm no not, reason. Again, I'm not. All right. So number one, if we're going to talk about it, I'd like more resource to be put in immigration. We can't just let people come in without right. properly vetting them. That's a huge problem. We don't know it's who this is. It's been a problem are. for 50 years. Number two, we have to look at the Department of Justice. Why did the FBI let Omar Mateen go twice? Why did the FBI let his wife go? Because he didn't do anything wrong. He didn't do anything against the law. Right. We don't know what he did or what he didn't. All we know but that why he do you argue twice. why that? Why do you argue that? But then say it's okay for him to get a gun. Why did they give him a gun? Because I, you know, you want the FBI to detain him, but you, you you're fine with them buying an assault rifle. <laughs> if let's say the FBI de- let's say the FBI detains him and they find nothing, it's well within his right to get one. They did, they did. They, that's exactly what they did. They, they went through his them. computer. They Dude. talked to all his friends. He did nothing wrong. And again, that gets back to how do you fight it? How do you fight it? He did nothing wrong, and then he just decided to do something wrong. You can't fight right. that. It's you're fighting crazy. It sucks. And I hear your frustration, man. But it's like, that's what's frustrating. What do you do? 
And do we absolutely know for sure that this wasn't some type of I'm a, my father has railed against gays for years and years and years, and I'm a gay man, and it's against my religion. Right. He's hanging out in gay bars, at, buying guys drinks, asking guys to buy him Enough drinks. Enough about your life, man. <laughs> no, you're right. And, and how do you know saying, it's not that? I don't. I don't. Yeah, there's a lot I of don't. there's a lot of personal shit to look. There's a lot of people who have a theory that Hitler got turned down by a broad when he was look look at James Corden get hit in the ass. Yeah. This guy just got hit in the ass by this by by Thor. Look at him. He's <laughs> so happy about it too. I mean, this guy just has to come out and say, "Listen, <laughs> look at dude, he just bent over. Look, look, look at that. Look what he just did. Oh, oh, come my, out God. Of the oh my God, I James." <laughs> The guy who hosts the show after Stephen Colbert, Gordon, just bent over while Thor threw a ping pong ball in his asshole and went, Ooh. It was a golf ball, not a ping pong. I'm for putting him in an internment camp. James Corden. <laughs> just Corden. Uh, look, it's the most, the point is what triggered this in me is this helicopter that just went over. Mm-hmm. I think right now, again, Dan, was that a laugh? What? <laughs> I didn't laugh. La- we'll play it back. You laugh sometimes. Uh, I think it's a nervous laughter over James Corden to the ping pong ball. <laughs> the helicopter going over is scary because I think there's shit going on right now that we don't even know about. That we don't even know about. That hopefully they're stopping. Hopefully they're stopping. And New York is numero uno, <laughs> man. I'll give it to you right now. After that, you know, what, I, I would love, would this, should this be the case? Say there's a guy in this building right now on the first floor going, I'm for ISIS, fuck everybody. But, you know, what happened the other day was great. Uh, I'm, I'm pro the Omar, I think, blah, blah, blah. Uh, uh, and we hear that helicopter going over and we're all scared. What do you do with that guy? What do you do with that guy? You, do I pick up the phone and complain? There's a guy on the first floor. He's saying that what happened in Florida was perfect, blah, blah, blah. You question him. Does that guy get a gun? Does that guy get detained and put in a camp like you're saying? Well, well, <laughs> saying. well, well whatever. You get detained. Somehow they, they do whatever should be done with that guy in our heads. We're like, he's now not a problem because we have him in this program, whatever Trump wants. No, you can't. It's America, man. And that has a price. That has a lot of negatives. One of them is... We're going to live in the other option is you know, and we're coming off Syria, (laughs) and we're coming off the huge backlash of Snowden. Everybody was so upset. The government was looking into our into our computers, right? So So what do you do? It's clearly that. Well, well, first of all, clearly that 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 doesn't prevent shit. Right. Well, it was. I mean, I mean, it doesn't prevent everything. Is the point? It prevents some stuff, but it can't prevent. There's no way to get in that fucker's head. I feel that way about the list thing, by the way, because then it could be argued that the government could put you on whatever list you want, and then you, you your rights start being taken right. away. Yeah. And that's, that's scary. That's well. scary. Yeah, yeah. That's scary. So when you asked me the question like that before, you know, you would have to say that, that if, if it's not proven that he's done anything wrong, but he I, should be allowed to get Of one. course, yeah. Right, exactly. And the FBI can't deter him. So now you got a guy with a gun, the FBI can't deter him, who's clearly a powder keg. And then one day, right, maybe a chick fucking turns him down again maybe his father says something about gays and he's secretly gay gets mad maybe a guy cuts him off in a fucking light (laughs) and he goes against the ak-3 all i'm saying is it might be nice if he didn't have the weapon to make it as easy maybe he goes home and goes where's that gun uh, and, 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 and before he can calm down, he kills people. Maybe if he goes home and he can't find the gun, he sits down and goes, oh, let's watch Sports Center. And it goes away because he doesn't have the gun. He doesn't have the means to kill all the people right there. So maybe he sits down and his anger goes away eventually before he gets a chance to. Like a lot of guys shoot people up and go, oh, fuck, what did I do? I'm, not, I'm really not that bad. That could be the case, too. I don't know. But look, if that guy's got a gun, I'm all for you having one. I guess because as as far as defending your own home, guy, I would you know I would love these fucking motherfucking burglars, man. You'd love for somebody to have a gun when they come in, but uh, at a club when you're dancing, you got a gun strapped to your ankle. What's going to happen? I don't know. First of all, you can't dance. You ever try to do the moonwalk with an AK-50 <laughs> strapped to your fucking ankle? <laughs> all right, let's take a break, Dan, and uh, we'll we'll come back and do one more. Uh, 
uh, we're back. Some, you know, I, I'm going to get away from the political stuff because I, I, I'm right. not speaking for Ben or Danny. I am not. I'm not smart with politics. I want to talk about one. There is one more oh, thing. One no. terrorist oh, thing. Dan, please, what? There is a terrorist in Mario's life. <laughs> Flimsy Greenberg. What's uh, the update? Uh, do we have well, any I don't, well, Why is that? I, I don't know this update. What, what was, well, I know Flimsy Greenberg was busting your balls. How has that become a terrorist? Well, the Flimsy Greenberg is, first of all, a character, well, I, a character <laughs> I invented. Uh, there's a lot of people in show business, and I'm not saying it's everybody, <laughs> who happen to be homosexual <laughs> and Jewish. Well, so I created guy. a character who's the head of NBC, the, uh, the fictional character, <laughs> the head of NBC comedy development. Well, this and uh, his name, uh, excuse me, please, <laughs> please, Mario. You got to wait. I, Mario, time. I will say, Mario, <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> well, I want you to talk. Okay. I want a, I want as I, I want a poster above above my bed, a still shot of James Corden <laughs> bending over while those Thor shoots a ping pong ball in his asshole. <laughs> Can this guy just come out already? Can he just come out? Mm. Can he just come out? <laughs> he, he bent over. <laughs> and went, whoa, Thor just shot a ping pong ball in my asshole. <laughs> this show, yeah, I think it was a good title for, uh, I think I'm a good at titling things, like Too Fat to Fish, bestseller, Crash and Burn. <laughs> I, I watched this show with James Corden. I got, how about this? The direct opposite of funny. <laughs> you think uh, you know? You know they have ironic nicknames like they call a fat guy tiny. How about uh, well, they should do that with the show? They do, uh, hilarious. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chris Penn is alive and he's a chef. We're looking at the TV. And we're doing non sequiturs. Uh, so uh, again, Flimsy Greenberg is a character I created, who's a, a gay Jewish guy, the head of uh, the comedy development NBC, a fictional character, Flimsy Greenberg. Now, a guy on Twitter, of course, love the name without my permission, becomes Flimsy <laughs> Greenberg, and chooses because of an episode that Mario was on to get all up in Mario's kitchen, as we'll say. What's going on, Mario? He bought my name from my website, MarioBosco.com, and That's he terrible. also bought MarioBosco.net. Oh, my God. Leaving me .org and .g, uh, government, whatever. Did he, he buy Ma did he buy Mario <laughs> Bosco? Did he buy Mario Bosco? That's a shame. <laughs> no, I'm serious. Now, my website. That's a good one. <laughs> Mario Bosco, that's a good one. <laughs> No, I'm serious. I know you're serious. <laughs> and this asshole won't get you. Won't Wait, Comics Unleashed with Baron Allen's on. <laughs> this is my favorite episode with Jeff Caldwell. But I've been a comedian for 20 years, never heard of him. Ron Funches, black guy. Karen Rontowski, she looks hilarious. <laughs> Elon Gold, very funny guy, very talented guy. Uh, some of the best impressions ever. Elon Gold. I've known Elon for 23 years. Wow. <laughs> There's a black guy who's a DJ <laughs> who's looking at the records and spinning them. Byron Allen has, look at his body. What happened to Byron <laughs> Allen? Byron Allen, something happened. Like his balls <laughs> moved up to his stomach. <laughs> who's dressing him? Look at those pants. By the way, Mario Joyner and Byron Allen never been in the same room together. <laughs> 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 this show's hilarious. Norm was on Comics Unleashed once, and uh, the great Norm joke goes, I was on Comics Unleashed once. I never felt more <laughs> leashed. <laughs> uh, they have comics. Again, I've been, I, 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 how could I have never been asked to do this show 20 years? <laughs> he interviewed me. I did a press junket for the movie The Bachelor at the Four Seasons Hotel. All these, you, you do five-minute interviews with all these people they bring into you. You're like a mm -hmm. king. Like It was me, Renee, and Chris O'Donnell, the three people who did the junket. It's like in Notting Hill. <laughs> Well, uh, how is that possible? <laughs> what do you mean? In the movie Notting Hill, that's yeah. how he meets. That's how I've never seen. I don't know yet. the fucking movie. I'm just, dude, I'm straight. <laughs> he was looking at me like you know Ben Notting. That dude, scene, we're, we're, this know. ain't Pulse. <laughs> Elon Gold. <laughs> Dan, did you, did, 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 have you seen the movie Notting Hill, Mario? No, I have not. I mean, well, but why, I want to know well, how you thought he... we know that. Is gonna it's like the movie. My it's like where they meet. What? Flimsy. It's like where they meet in Notting Hill. Excuse me? <laughs> you know, it's the jinkid. That's where they meet, you grant. It's the jinkid. It's the meeting, you grant the jinkid. <laughs> Got up this morning, <laughs> drank myself some cum. <laughs> That's I my think favorite. we should hear another song. Oh, wait, let's hear that. Let's hear that the chick is talking. Let's hear her bit. 
she's killing it. Randomly to print things like, you should send Karen her inheritance now. <laughs> the black guy loves it. <laughs> Byron L. Elon Gold, it's, uh, it's Korean. Yeah, yeah it, uh, it means uh, your name too Jewish. <laughs> the black guy's loving everything. Who laughs at that? Oh my God, it's exciting. Watch this though, Byron, watch this. Black people in the house. You see how to get it done. You gotta, you gotta represent, Jews. This show's been on for 14 years. Uh... God, that's unwatchable. Holy shit. Hmm. If you, I guess if James... You know James Corden... You know how he got a show? He probably showed the executives this show right before he went in. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what the fuck are we talking about? Flimsy Greenberg. I, Flimsy Greenberg. What happened? What happened? So Flimsy gets a... Quite frankly, this story is not that interesting. So far. But it is. Because you... <laughs> but it is. <laughs> but it is, Artie. But it is. To get this guy... No, I don't. <laughs> You're like stuttering John now. Can you call God and can you call Twitter? Are you have, do you still have the number for Twitter? Hello, Twitter. Do you still have the number for Twitter? And could you ask them to, to tell Flimsy Greenberg to stop terrorizing? Dan is nearly on the floor. Mario, Mario. Could they stop? Artie, could you get me on comics of me? With could you get flim 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 flimsy green i'm flimsy greenberg i'm doing the character flimsy greenberg it's flim instead of flim can you get flimsy greenberg verify verify can you get I know you're busy. I know you're busy. I know you're busy. Can you get Can you get it? Can you get it? Help me, wait, man. Help me, wait, man. Help me, wait, man. Help me, wait, man. Dan, what's the, th- the next song, party? We have, I have to go to the Comedy Store. I'm going to meet Jeff Ross and David Tell at the Comedy Store. We're going to stay on stage till 5 a.m. and yell how we're bitter about stuff. <laughs> you guys want to come? Who's coming? Ben, you coming? Uh, sounds like the leash. Minutes. Sounds like he's not. He sounds like he's on husband's unleash. Everybody relax. Husband's yeah. unleash. Everybody relax. Don't call me flimsy. <laughs> flimsy from Clifton. But Mario, real quick, I do have a confession to make. I am for real. I am flimsy Greenberg. I that, bet he is. That's why I'm here today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that he yes, is I actually am. is. Yes, I am. The fans asked me to yep. play this character. Because your story's got a little tired and slow. And he so never bought your to, thing, by the way. Yeah. It's a joke. Well, no, I'll give it back to you. That's also why I'm here. I'll give you the username and password for it. Thank you, Art. Yeah. But I am I am Flimsy Greenberg. What do you think about that? He's also Nigger McGee. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just Mary, I'm just kidding. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know who it is. By the way. Uh, I like his work. It's not me. By the way, I, you get to, you know, I, I feel like I'm working with Gilbert Godfrey sometimes on the set. HBO is a great, they do me a solid, but they're very politically correct. And sometimes I get carried away. We cut. We actually improvise a lot, and I uh, came up with the character Tracy Morgan Freeman. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I'm, like, I'm the president. <laughs> hey, Miss Daisy, I gotta make water. <laughs> Tracy Morgan, Tracy Morgan Spurlock, I'm working on as well. 
<laughs> I ate at McDonald's 30 days in a row. <laughs> Quite, what the hell's the problem with that? We all did in the 70s. <laughs> uh, what's the next song, the Dan Gay song? This is to the boys of summer. <laughs> I can see you. Don Henley. Funny already. Well, lots of loves the boys. <laughs> he needs a cock to eat. <laughs> He got his anal toy. Ah. Rick Steve's is out of reach. He's swimming trunks. He's at the school. His cock stands up alone. But a lot just thinking about my semen while he's stroking my big bone. Yeah. There's a lot of toy. Rassles open just for fun. I got my dick pulled out in my cock ring. He's ah. Danny. And I can tell you my penis will. There's nothing to come out to. <laughs> Very good. That's a great one. Who was that? A great one. That's a great one. All right, ben, you want to plug anything? Uh, Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm for it too, brother. No, I know, man. By the way, it was created when we had muskets as <laughs> AK-15. Now, uh, uh, just follow me on Twitter, B, uh, Ben from Clifton. Can you call <laughs> Audie, can you call Ben from Twitter? <laughs> can you get back? <laughs> Can you jump in to plug my dick at the stress stress Can you call? Ta, 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 ta. You know, he called me when I was in Chicago. Who? Uh, John. John. And he said that you told him that he. he me? Could, he could, yes, he could come in here yeah. and interview guests using the equipment. Yeah, he wanted, to know, he wanted to know if I can engineer. Complete lie. I go, I, so I'm going to come. Go, first of all, first of all, Dan, how come I'm hearing about this for the first time? <laughs> how long ago did this happen? Last Wednesday or how come you Wednesday before. Uh, why wouldn't you me? It, okay, I'm going to take a, 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 I get aggravated at Dan sometimes. I'm going to take a poll in here. Ben, do you find it odd that Dan didn't immediately tell me that? No, I don't. I'll tell you why. Why? You had a, you had a big past couple days. He doesn't want to bother you with that. No, no, no. And I think you would no, know that that's an obvious no, this right? Is ben, uh, no, no. He wouldn't tell me John wants to come in and use the equipment. Well, I can say Well, he no, said right? he had talked to you that you guys had talked. So that, that you just assume that's it. true? No, I didn't do it. Well, why didn't you tell me that happened? It's hilarious. <laughs> Why wouldn't you? T it's weird you don't tell me that. But then you do tell me you, you go to your architecture group. <laughs> Why don't you? That's a major, like, I, I'm, it's weird you didn't tell me that. It's weird. It really is. It's, it's weird. I, I, I just didn't, I didn't think of it until now. Oh, my God. I mean, are you that unaware of the show? Like, we could have done an hour on that. So he will be here tomorrow, Art. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it, I mean, Dan. We could have goofed on I mean, Why wouldn't you tell me that? Dan, Dan, I think, has a stunning lack of, like, uh, I, uh, secretly, he probably roots against the show. <laughs> He's thinking of what coupons to Dan has tomorrow. a tape. What was the tape you said you have today of Jeremy Piven? I have, I have Jeremy Piven. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, on an answering machine. On an answering machine. Uh, saying what? That he uh, is very upset and he's going to ruin any chance I have in this business. Okay. Because well, first of all, maybe is that the reason <laughs> yeah. nothing happened? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what are you mad at me for? Is Jeremy Piven. <laughs> Okay, Dan. Okay, I'll go to Ben again. Is yes. it odd? That's the first time I'm hearing that. I we, we have a about we it. have a podcast where we can play. We've talked about it. it. Something's going on in Chicago too. Dan's not telling me something. <laughs> He's got to have a gay lover or something, <laughs> no. or something secret. Dan basically went back to Chicago. This is the story. I find the note. I wake up. It's four thirty in the morning. <laughs> first of all, we're two guys. I don't give a shit where you go. There's notes. Call if you need anything. You're in Chicago. What am I saying? Any cream? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you need. I, I go. I go uh, you want to order your Cubs World Series shirt ahead of time? Oh, exactly. Well, well that's, <laughs> Jesus Christ! If that's the mentality, we're we're up against real crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I I, I couldn't decipher it because sometimes Dan's texts and notes they're not decipherable. Uh, the, the way he tells a story, that's how he texts. He goes off on tangents out of nowhere. It just says Bonnie Bernstein. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so I'm going to 7-Eleven, Matty Bernstein, then I'm going to 7-Eleven, and I'll learn Holly, and then I'm going to 7-Eleven. Uh, and this is what he says. He goes, okay, listen, I had a rush to Chicago. I'm on the 4.45 a.m. flight. Uh, uh, sorry, man. Uh, I, uh, my father was in the backyard, and uh, he uh, turned the wrong key, and he can't get back in the door, and my mother doesn't know how to let him in, so I had to go to Chicago. <laughs> All right. 
Not kidding. I may my father and grandfather strike me down with the, all the force of thunder in heaven or probably hell for my father or purgatory. All the forces of wherever you are, if I'm lying, that's what it said. Okay. How do you interpret why? Okay. Here's the question class, the SAT question. Based on that note alone, why did Dan go back to Chicago? His father was locked out of the house. So Dan went back to Chicago. <laughs> to let his to father f- back in. <laughs> to turn a lock. <laughs> <laughs> to let his father in the in the house. <laughs> Why can't you train a Brussels Griffon? Okay, not, and then... <laughs> put his talent into They're door. so smart. That's not what I said. Tippy, door. Dan, Why that's exactly no, what you that's said. That's not what I said. I will go in the sound cloud. Because <laughs> I think it was a text. I will, go, I will get a high-tech guy. <laughs> I'll get Tim Cook. I'll get Tim Cook. <laughs> By the way, in the gay community, Tim Cook's cum is known as applesauce. I'm trying to spread that rumor. I, I will find a tech guy to, to, to get in the cloud. That's exactly what, it, what you made it sound like. I have a terrible relationship with my dad. If he would call for this similar instance, I would hang up the phone. I would fly, and I would I, I would fly back to Chicago if I fly, if, my, if, my, if my if one of them needs the Heimlich maneuver. I, I'd say get somebody else. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what are you talking about, Dan? It, what I think is, you know. I don't think Dan went to Chicago. I think he went to wherever his, you know, his partner is. Yeah, because his partner happened to be free. You got to steal moments. You have to steal away. And then the second time, the fence fell down, so I had to go back. And- of course, <laughs> of course, a fence fell down. So, by the way, coincidences happen on the weekends. There's little problems. <laughs> it's little problems. He doesn't have to take off work. What a coincidence that is. <laughs> we were on vacation. The water here. Yeah. Well, what a coincidence. <laughs> These things never happen when we're not on vacation. It's just when you have a yeah. chance to fly to Chicago. <laughs> It could be that a life partner somewhere is making plans. <laughs> Water heater. Okay. I'm going to give you another chance to come out. <laughs> Don't hit me with the fucking the thing that Mike Morales did on Stern, where I'm the bad guy. I'm giving you another, I want this on record. So everyone doesn't have sympathy for Dan when he picks and chooses his time. And Artie's the asshole. <laughs> I'm not going to do it on the Why does it why does I'm going to do it on the James Corden show. Do it on comedy. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Well, I, hopefully that's a duel to coming out. I'm going to shove a water heater up James <laughs> Corden. It's never going to happen. Dan, what, the, the coincidence is the, 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 your father fucking breaks the water heater on the first day of our vacation. And then good news, after that, I'll spend the next week in Chicago because it's our vacation. And what do you think? He ripped it out of the ground? It think? never happened, Ben. You're asking what? him to create details on the spot. <laughs> the water heater. How, how did he move? Like, isn't it in the ground? Like, no. A water heater? No, or, it's like in the basement. basement. In yeah, the basement yeah. is what I mean. But he what moved do you do? It. Just rip the whole... What, is no, he the Hulk? The, uh, what, he about, put, what about... You, you should have went there and let yourself out of the closet. <laughs> 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 well, you're a good son. <laughs> give us give us an update on Mar- So who you're owns a good Mario Blasco? You're a good partner. <laughs> All right. Well, well, well again, it's very back. awkward for Dan. Just keep moving. Keep moving. I need to get Flimsy Greenberg to give me back my. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna happen. Anything else you want to plug? We gotta get out of here. Um, just uh, Mario July Bosco. 21st. Are oh, you gonna be an engagement party? Bon- <laughs> <laughs> Barnes and Noble. Oh, that's still happening. Is that guy the owner of that store? Doesn't know that's happening. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Eight forty-two Sunrise Highway in Long Island. Did, how'd, the, how'd the other one go, man? The big sign. Wait, it doesn't pretty good. I wish you would have showed up. How many people? Okay. Yeah, all right, where were you? A bunch, a, a bunch. bunch. Well, you know what? My water, my father's water here. <laughs> Isn't your father dead? Art? Oh wait, yeah. I'm looking at the website, Mario. They say Flimsy Greenberg has a book signing that day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, How are you going to... You know, it's kind of... Uh, on a whimsy, I turned into Flimsy. That's it. <laughs> well, I need to get him to give back to my website. All right, let me... Do, I'm going to tag That's the tough show. Talk. I'm going to tag the show uh, the way Corden got tagged. Uh, I'm going to bring the room down. Now, you know, every once in a while, people uh, uh, tweet me uh, moments that I had on Howard that they uh, that they say uh, makes them laugh and gets them through some hard times. I, I take that seriously, and I forget half the shit I did. I was there eight and a half years. Ben is a very good fan. He's actually a, you can tell he's a funny guy because the references he makes and the stuff he, he points to, and it makes me feel good when I hear people laugh. And there's that uh, people yell at me sometimes. You might hear when I people go wow, that's like a you know not a catchphrase, but you know whatever. It's my get her done. 
And no. uh, uh, that all comes from a morning. I, again, I don't know where this came from. We had an amputee beauty pageant, which is a classic <laughs> Stern thing. Amputees, people who had legs and flim, uh, flimsies, uh, limbs amputated, came in for a beauty pageant. And I don't know where this came It's really one of the darker things I sort of ever did on that show where I was had, I did a, sort of this guy character complaining, uh, like uh, like them whining. I don't have a leg. Wham. <laughs> And Howard just laughed, and you could tell. This is a good example too. This clip of how Howard's laughter, you know, feeds you when you're doing stuff on that show as a comic. I would tell you, I'm comics who came in. It's an audience of one man. Forget the audience. You make Howard laugh, it all falls into place. And this is an example of that you could tell he dug it from the beginning. And then this is all before this happened. By that time, I knew how to just attack. You know, if you saw Howard laughing, I, I figured out how to like. You know, that, that right hand that Hagler hit Hearns with in the third round that you see from the top, which, by the way, the best knockout punch ever, that that view. Hearns is already on Queer Street, as we used to say, <laughs> that walking around incoherent, and Hagler cocks his fucking right hand. Marvin Hagler cocks his right hand and runs across the ring and lays out. <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens. Like Howard was going to... And I, and I, this is a time where you, you know what he's laughing at and you go for the kill. And this is an example of that. And amputees were right outside. Oh, God. <laughs> and it's also an example of, it's also an example of Gary, much like John. I, I think maybe jealous I'm getting laughs and keeps crowbarring in his opinion. <laughs> uh, a weird dynamic. It's also an example of how Robin is perfect for the show because her sense, it, it's great to see how Robin has a sense of humor and she feeds the whole thing and her laugh is great. And it shows us all having fun, the good old days. I don't know what happened. Well, I became a heroin addict. But, uh, again, there's more to it than that. It's odd what happened over there, man. It's odd. I almost feel, I almost feel bad for my old friend Howard. I feel he got brainwashed by somebody. He's not, the stories I hear from people, and I won't say who people are, but there's, there's scary shit going on over there. People are afraid. <laughs> people are afraid. It's uh, the stories I hear I don't believe because the stories I hear, uh, listen, Howard was always a guy with a big ego. Everybody knew that, but he, he was a good person. And the stories I hear indicate that he's not anymore. And that makes me sad. Now, maybe the stories are bullshit. I don't know. I wouldn't know because I don't talk to Howard. The thing with me and Howard is very odd because he, he pretends I did not exist. Very weird. And. I left. I was the bad guy in that situation. I, I, I you know, Howard did nothing wrong. I always defend him. He, he did everything he could for me. But I, I just went down that hill and I crashed into a mountain and I had to take time to get back. But there was no reason for me to go back there. And I'm not talking about on the air. The show's still fucking entertaining. I listen to these people bitch about the show. And the, the, you know, the show's still funny as hell. Howard's still brilliant. I'm talking about shit I hear off the air. It, 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 it's very odd. Very odd. Like Scientology odd, that's all I'll say. <laughs> and I'm not being hostile at all. I I love the guy. And uh, hardly anybody listens to this show. It's like just fans. It's a small family here. I'm talking about it. We're all, we're all major uh, Howard fans. But he's doing shit that's, that's sort of like really bad. And I, I, if it's true, that's not the guy I knew. That's the point I'm trying to make. I knew a different guy who was way more loyal to people than these stories in the game. Way more loyal. Way more uh, down to earth in a way. So he's flimsy, Greenberg? <laughs> no, I'm saying yeah, it's, uh, maybe no. Howard's flimsy. He's not. Flimsy I, I just made that joke. He's not flimsy, Greenberg. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's very weird, and uh, I feel sad for the people involved. And uh, in a way, I, I don't know. The stories. The, the again, I, I've had a lot of clarity. Uh, and, and I'm in a very happy place. I'm very happy. In some ways, my career has never gotten better, and that's that's somebody up there liking me, man. I don't know. Uh, Amen. I say, uh, St. Peter's better be nice to me because I can't pay this bill, man. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've had a lot of chances. Uh, and stuff's good now, and I'm happy, and tomorrow I can wake up and have a heart attack, but uh, I've, had my fun. I, I've, I've, I've had my fun. I've had my fun. I've had my fun. And made uh, whatever mark I'm going to make. But, uh, you know, I, I do hope, I wish nothing but happiness and health for everybody there, including Howard. And I don't, it sounds like he kind of, in some ways, lost his mind, if these stories are true. Mm -hmm. um, and I won't get into it, but um, weird.
uh, I, 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 people say uh, on Twitter when they try to bust my balls, like, oh, you're happy you blew the best gig on earth. Uh, guys, I've, I've, you couldn't pay me a, 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 a million dollars, which is what they used to pay me, actually, <laughs> uh, to go back there. <laughs> I, 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 no. Walking back in there is, is not the place you want to be, as far as my career is concerned. Uh, I'm very happy I'm a free man. I'm off that island. And uh, that's the, the new situation. The old guy, the old Howard, I, there's nothing I wouldn't, I wouldn't do for, I, there's nothing I wouldn't do for Howard now anyway. I'm very loyal to him. I'll always be, but uh, I hope he's okay. Um, uh, and I hope the people there are okay. And these clips that people send are so special to me because it was such a special time in my life. I was on, in my opinion, the greatest entertainment show ever, ever, and still is, that I was a fan of since I was 13 years old because my father turned me on to it. And if my father was alive when I got the job on that show, I've said this before, he'd be as more proud, more proud that I got that job than if I became a U.S. senator. <laughs> I'm not even a little bit joking. I was, you know, the, the, the only third host ever of the, in my opinion, the greatest, not just radio, cable TV, TV, entertainment show of all time. Five hours a day, 32 years. Howard's giving you. Who's doing that? So when you bitch about him, fuck off, quite frankly. But uh, that's why I, I get worried sometimes. And again, I'm telling this on a very low rated podcast. No one's going to care. So this is for a family of fans and people who work there. I hope he's okay. And when you guys send me these clips, I have no guilt in playing these at all. They're on YouTube. They're all over the place anyway. Uh, this is, I left a lot of blood on that floor. I was funny. I told stories. I was honest. Uh, stories I regretted telling. But uh, I laid it on the line, man. On the line. You saw, all the, you saw all the scars. All of them. Heroin on down, baby. You came but I'm fine with there. it. I'm fine with it. There's a voice in my head saying something. I, I said you came clean. Oh, you are the voice man. While you were on the show. And I, uh, uh, yeah, I, I uh, so, you know, I, I would never play a part uh, that I'm not on. I wouldn't exploit it like that. But where, you know, I'm creating something or I'm telling a story, I have no problem with playing it because uh, that 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 belongs to all of us. And, uh, and when people tweet this stuff to me, they say, you know, I listen to this and it gets me through the day sometimes. I feel better. And I, that, I promise you, that means more to me than almost anything else. In comedy, and uh, this is the morning in 04 where this wah thing started, and uh, <laughs> it is kind of dark, but uh, it's a four minute clip, and uh, I'll end the show because I promised the guy on Twitter, I said I'll play it on the on the on the podcast, and uh, you know who you are, I'll give you a shout out. To, you never know who wants a shout out, but uh, I thank you for your kind words, and uh, I'll end the show with this. Ben, thank you so much. Thank you, Artie. Uh, thank for you, coming. I, 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 uh, you're a good man coming anytime. And uh, Mario Bosco, I love you, buddy. You know that. I love you too, buddy. Always. You're welcome here anytime, man. And uh, you keep uh, interrupting because that's the bit. We, make, uh, it, we, we a, make it funny. This is what's called comedy. You're a Jew brother to me. Well, we'll talk about that. <laughs> there is a uh, resemblance. I'm a Jew brother? <laughs> no, a true brother. I know you have a Puerto Rican brother. Oh, you have an Irish brother. I'm sorry. An Irish brother. Well, I want to know where Dan's uh, laundry balls are, his blue balls. The blue balls are in the dryer. Uh, and he's going to take them the next time his father gets locked out of that. <laughs> Dan, thank you so much. With the coupon. I love you, Filato. And, uh, of course, those song parties. Keep them coming, man. Funny. And keep a salute coming. to all the fans. Because without the fans, we'd be nowhere. Actually, we'd be somewhere bigger because there's only a couple thousand of them. We need more. We need more. The fans are disappointing us, quite frankly. <laughs> All right, let's. Uh, l l I want you to. I, I want to listen to this clip because it makes me feel good too about a time, a, a time long ago that I feel like never happened. Salud. If you want to do two different outfits, or, or they just come in in swimsuits? I think swimsuit. Yeah, yeah, that's the way to go. So that's part of their appearance. Okay. Then you got. Uh, then you'll, personality. You'll, right, you'll do the personality test. And yeah, you do an interview. Yeah, we don't want any whiners. So it's personality. Wow, I don't have a leg. Wow. It's it's personality. My life's so hard. Wow, wow, wow. I don't have a leg. I'm but, ugly. Yeah. So, so you're judging them on three areas. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. I've got no appendages. I've got like a one eyebrow. Wow. <laughs> got an enormous nose and fake teeth and no arms. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I've got four of my teeth knocked out. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I don't have a neck, and I've got the flu. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> I'm missing two legs and an arm. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> My
My two eyes are different colors, and I have no knees. Wow, 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 wow. Yeah, you cry, baby. Tell it walking, cry, baby. Mm. Tell it walking. Look at me. I'm overweight myself. I'm dealing with it. One, one, of, the girl, one of the girls at the tape. It was so funny. She's like, here's what I look like. And she's wearing a, she's wearing a dress, and she goes... Here's the stump, and she pulls off her fake leg and throws it, and she goes, and here's the rump, and she turns around and lifts her skirt up. Uh, now, that's a girl who should be in the uh, pageant. I, she had a lot of personality. Yeah, right. I got a stump. Wah, wah. <laughs> Almost all of them are from... Toughen up, honey. <laughs> <laughs> Almost all of them are from where? Almost all of them are from cancer, except one girl... I, I lost I, a leg from cancer. What? Wah, wah. And I'm what? a hemophiliac. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. <laughs> I didn't investigate the whole thing, but one girl said something about losing a hand in a lawnmower accident. Ooh. <laughs> Chlamydia victim! <laughs> Legless hemophiliac! You, you think she'll be whining about that, Arden? Oh, I lost my hand in a lawnmower. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I dropped my crack pipe in the blender and it went on puree. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> So, Artie, as a ju one of the judges, you're going to be looking for a chick who's kind of upbeat. Yeah, tough. Yeah, tough. tough. Someone See, who can face it. I've got AIDS and no feet. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> See, one of the girls is like a triathlete. She sent me video of her throwing out the first pitch at a Major League Baseball game. Right, that would be... Yeah, would... that's the kind of girl Artie's oh, looking for. Oh, that's, no, that's a nice. Yeah, she's, she's not, not complaining. She's not complaining <laughs> about bitching about it. Oh, i got no legs. Could you help me up the steps? <laughs> 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 like, it's easy getting up the steps being 30 pounds overweight. <laughs> so you don't want to hear Where's any... Where's your ramp? Yeah. You don't want to hear any kind of complaining. No whining at all. Right. Nothing. So you're saying it's... So a... the personality thing's going to be interesting. So it's looks, <laughs> amputation, <laughs> and personality. That's, that's the biggest the category. Yeah. Personality. For me. Shouldn't they have to do some physical uh, activity, or is that too weird? Um, we didn't tell them. Uh, that it happened. depends. I mean, if you give them a physical activity and everybody's missing, would it be fair? The same thing, right. you know, or different things, you know, and it's easier for a legged person to do. It would be wrong. I've got no extremities and strep throat. <laughs> wow, wow. But you bring up a good point now, Howard. I can't scratch myself. Are the girls coming in with or without? I've got an itch, but no arms. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've, got well. an, I've got an itchy leg, but no arms. <laughs> And it's only one leg. Are the girls wow. coming in what? With or without the prosthesis. In other words, you want them to come in they with it. They can come in with it, but take it off. They take it off. It's right. up to them. That's their, that's their choice. They, even, they have to decide on presentation. Because even those are weird. How, one, <laughs> Wait a minute, one of the girls, then how do you see what's, you know. Oh, you can see, Robert. Like one of the girls. No, they take it off. Well, that's what you're saying. It's their choice. I'm saying I want to see. Uh oh. See, one of, the, one of the women... Okay. Yeah, see, some play. of the women have legs that... No, I'm sorry, Rob. That's not in the rules. <laughs> some of the women have legs that are like fake legs that look like mannequin legs. But like one of the women has like... It's, the whole leg's metal. Like that guy on Survivor. Yeah. That's right. a whole leg. Like, yeah. It doesn't look like a leg. <laughs> like she looks like the bionic man. Exactly. I don't want to take my prosthesis off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let me just say this. Uh, mornings like that. <laughs> mornings like that make uh, the day when I was 14 years old when I decided to become a comedian. And all the shit I went through, and it was a lot of shit. Mornings like that for uh, uh, the greatest show ever for millions of people having that kind of fun. God damn it, I miss that. Uh, those mornings made that decision completely worthwhile. What fucking fun. At the end of the game, I...